Welcome to the Multimedia Podcast, uh, episode three, if you consider episode two was two parts. So either episode three or episode four, depending on how you look at it. And uh, it's a brand new day. It's a brand new week. We uh, we just came off of a um, a failed episode, our first failed episode. Yeah. We were intending to do a whole episode talking about Blade Runner 2049. So we went early in the morning, and we saw Blade Runner 2049 in the theater, and we had brought all our recording gear along, and we were intending to talk about it on the car ride home and record our genuine reactions, and it just wasn't good. Nope. It just wasn't going well. So we scrapped the whole thing, and now here we are back in our normal format. Hopefully, maybe we should get a like a driver next time, so we can yeah focus maybe more on the podcast yeah we should hire a limo. That's right. Get a lift. We're uh, gonna get a limo just for you guys out there, get just an so Uber. we can give you our natural <laughs> reactions right after the show. Yeah, and and as uh, above and beyond us not having anything interesting to talk about, it was raining. And the windshield wipers in Josh's car were really? really loud. And, yeah, and it was just real nice. not good. So here we are. And um, if you remember, we've um, instituted a new weekly thing where we each pick a movie of the week. And um, we're going to try to get m- music and movies done in one episode this week. Um, let's start with movies, I suppose. That's kind of our, uh, our standard thing. So do you want to talk about your movie of the week first, or should I? My movie of the week. Right. You ready for this? No. Oh. Give me a second. All right. Okay, hit me. (laughs) All right. My movie of the week is I didn't think hard enough about my movie of the week, but I'm going to go with the Cornetto trilogy as a whole. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, I could pick one. But, but I know we have differing opinions on that, so mm. so I w- won't get into that right now. But as a whole, uh, the Cornado Trilogy is this awesome trilogy created by Stephen Wright. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it has Simon Pegg and Nick Frost as, like, the main characters in every single movie. Yeah, but they're... And, um, but they're, they're not an actual trilogy. Yeah, they're all the movies are technically disconnected. Standalone movies. But they all, they all serve the same purpose and that is like bringing comedy to a specific genre it was horror with Shaun of the dead it was buddy cop movies with hot fuzz and it was sci-fi with the world's end yep and they all star uh, the same kind of ensemble cast there are a couple of them that aren't in all of them but there's a you know you got bill nye you got uh is that how you pronounce his name bill nye i just say bill nye well that that makes you think of the science guy (laughs) i know uh, uh, it's got, um, I was going to say Martin Scorsese. Who's the, <laughs> Martin something, Martin. It's Sh- got the Hobbit. No, uh, Martin Freeman. Yeah, that's the Hobbit. It. That's it. The Hobbit. Yeah. Um, he's in, uh, he's, he's definitely in At World's End. I think he's in all three of them. Or The World's End. He's in all three of them. Is he? He Because he's in Shaun of the Dead. Is he in... He's in Hot Fuzz, yeah. Yeah, He's one of the cops. He's one of the cops, that's right. He has a bit part in the first two and a major part in the third one. Well, then you have Mary. Who? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, The girl in Shaun of the Dead, her name's Mary. She was a clerk in, like, the opening scene, and then she turned Uh, into a zombie. Okay. And she was definitely in The World's End... When she was in the uh, therapeutic circle in the very beginning. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I I haven't seen that whole trilogy in quite a, quite some time. Except I've seen Hot Fuzz and uh, the uh, the World's End. Is it the World's End? Is that what's called? I believe so. Yes. Hot Fuzz and the World's End. I saw those pretty recently. Shaun of the Dead. It's been years. We oh, should you're uh, missing out. yeah. We should rewatch that sometime. But the reason I picked these as my favorite movies yeah. is because they are amazingly well edited. And uh, it just came to mind because I just picked up my copy of Baby Driver as of yesterday because that's out mm-hmm. in stores. Uh, so you guys can go see that, buy it, and watch that at your leisure, um, mm-hmm. which I would recommend. Give him money. Give him all the money. Um, and I just I think they're well done. I think they're well shot. The comedy in them is yep. good. You got some nice British actors. And Nick Frost and Simon Pegg are 
some of the funniest guys out there right now, if you ask oh, me. Oh, yeah, for sure. And it's not just them. It's uh, Edgar Wright's an amazing comedic director. Mm -hmm. He is actually, as far as comedies go, uh, either him and Mel Brooks, they're kind of tied for me as far as just consistently funny directors. And I haven't seen enough Mel Brooks films. I mean, I watched yeah. the Naked Gun trilogy with you. Well, that's not Mel Brooks. Who's that? That's uh, Zucker Brothers. They did. Oh. Airplane, Dang Top it. Secret. It's pretty similar. Okay, though. that's what I'm thinking. A similar Those style. <laughs> similar style. You've seen Mel Brooks. Spaceballs. I haven't balls. seen Spaceballs. I haven't seen Men in Tights. You haven't seen Spaceballs? Nope. Really? Nope. Wow. I own it, and I still haven't seen it. Uh, have you seen uh, Blazing Saddles? Uh, when I was a little boy, okay. about the age of five, it was uh, on TV, and I wasn't paying attention. All right. Well, uh, you should watch more Mel Brooks and more Zucker Brothers and I, I more Edgar agree. Wright. But I feel like you've seen. I feel like oh. you you had to choose two movies of the week, and you're like, I'll just get all the Edgar Wright movies out of the way first, and then I can move on to other movies. <laughs> but there, I would be willing to bet there's um, one Edgar Wright movie you haven't seen that I just watched recently. It's called A Fistful of Fingers. I have it right here. Oh my. <laughs> It's a western. It was one of his first movies. I, 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 at first I thought it was his first movie, but apparently he did another like low budget one ahead of that. I'm gonna set my laptop on down. All right, that didn't make a noise. We're good. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's really weird because it's just a bunch of kids doing a indie film called A Fistful of Fingers. Yeah, Fistful of Fingers, and the humor in it is not what you'd typically associate. Edgar Wright's Edgar Wright the Stephen humor Wright. the humor the humor in it is not the humor you typically associate with Edgar Wright that's what I was trying to say it's very really wacky like cartoony slapstick and it's really funny but it's it's just so different it's it's interesting seeing like the genesis of his uh, filmmaking it's a yeah. Uh, yeah really interesting I mean, he his camera work is is really cool. I just uh -huh. like those like snapshot montages where he just yeah. gets a lot of information thrown at you right away and yeah, you it's that it it's all. that really fast paced ballistic editing that's really his staple. Yeah, um, and, and it works really well. Something that I kind of felt was missing from Baby Driver, but that harkens back to what we were talking about in I, Baby Driver. I agree, it was missing from Baby Driver, but I think he was going for something else with Baby. Yeah, Driver yeah. I I've accepted that even though Baby Driver doesn't have have that Edgar Wright style. I think that's the point. I think he's trying to branch out into something new, and yeah. that's fine by me. So yeah, that's um, I I kind of just went and threw another trilogy at you for my favorite movie again. Yeah. <laughs> um, even though this one isn't technically a trilogy. But yeah, no, they're um, all great. Um, they're all really good. What's Go your favorite of the three? Don't we uh, like differ completely on this? Okay, so it, it all comes down to like okay, so let's order them top to bottom. So okay. So best to, to least favorite. And by least favorite, I mean there's still some of our favorite movies. Yes. But just in the context of these if, three if, films. If I had to eliminate one of the three, that's the one I would go with. Like if I had to pick a, a worst of the three, it's still... And I think we both agree that the worst is... Okay, we don't agree on that. No, we don't. My list, that, I think it's almost, it's almost I think it's, opposite. I think it's, we have our top and bottom split. Yeah, it, mine goes Hot Fuzz, then Shaun of the Dead, then The World's End. And I and think yours is just Mine the, is the exact opposite, where mine's At World's End, or The World's End, Shaun of the Dead, and then Hot Fuzz. Okay, and that's interesting to me, because... The World's End, while it is still fantastic, I love that movie. I love all of them. They're all pretty much like 10 stars as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. The World's End is the closest to a 9 star of the three of them to me. Because it's... In fact, I think I would call World's End a 9 star. Because it's just... I don't know. Just something about it just feels off to me. And it's... Um, and you don't really like Hot Fuzz of the three. And I love well, I Hot love Fuzz. Hot Fuzz. Right, Don't yeah. get me wrong, like I said. But um, I'm not usually the biggest fan of buddy cop movies because they mm -hmm. were really overplayed. And then just Hot Fuzz came out, and it was by far the best buddy cop movie I've ever seen. Well, it's kind of parodying buddy cop uh, movies. Yeah, which is it's, great, in yeah. my opinion. But it just didn't have the same kind of impact and connotations that I, I wanted from it. Yeah. Um, the best parts about it are... 
basically the end scene. Yeah. And that's, you know, story-wise about it. Like, otherwise, right. I'm just sitting there and I'm watching Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, which I get to do in the other movies, just all the same. So um, it just kind of boils down to you're not a big fan of cop movies. Usually. It, yeah. They have to be really good. Yeah. And by really good, that's my own personal standard. So mm-hmm. it, it's at all over the place. But um, when it comes down to, like the world's end you know i I saw that movie and you know it it deals with some really cool mental disabilities that i was like oh that's kind of neat i'm glad they're they're kind of shining lights on this and then they're doing funny things in the time being and just like the weird blue plasticky invaders like no actually i love it (laughs) one thing i want to say about every movie in that trilogy it's pretty incredible they all lampoon and parody a specific genre like Mm -hmm. they're each obviously poking fun at their respective genres but at the same time they're competent enough and respectful enough to the source material that they're parodying that they stand as pretty decent entries in the genres that they're parodying like definitely uh, yeah Shaun of the Dead's a pretty good zombie movie. It's just a zombie romantic comedy. Oh, it's a fan. Hot Fuzz. Hot Fuzz movie. is a pretty good cop movie. One of yeah. the best cop movies that like I've you ever said. seen. Definitely. Uh, World's End's a pretty cool sci-fi movie, but they're all they're sort of paying homage or homage. I don't know how you pronounce it. homage. I think you were right. The <laughs> homage time. sounds cooler. No, they're paying homage, but they're like lampooning at the same no, time. No, what I think is the kind of the issue you ended up having with the world's end was the fact that it was probably the weakest type of sci-fi movie. Like it was the weakest one portraying the type it was, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, and I can completely agree with that. I don't think it did a did the best job being this sci-fi alien invasion yeah. movie. But everything else it did, it did right for me. I didn't like the um, ending. It's kind of the flip of Hot Fuzz. I think the movie was pretty strong. The ending, I'm not a big fan of. But Oh, alright. Yeah. It, it felt a little... I don't know. It just wasn't I, wasn't my cup of tea. If you guys go see it, we're not going to spoil it. But I thought yeah. the ending was, was a pretty cool send-off to the entire you know trilogy, even though they're not I connected suppose. as a whole. Just kind of having everybody in their own right. Hmm being Not right brought it <laughs> brought to their end and i i think it was pretty cool yeah um it's actually kind of um ironic that you picked that because i was lazy and i didn't pick my uh movie of the week before just a couple minutes before shooting i picked it right now while we were recording oh wow okay so i got you beat but um <laughs> so i was looking at my letterbox account and i i was like i was looking at my five star rated movies and i should say there's quite a few five star rated movies in my letterbox. I'm not. I'm very. If I if I just end up just like emotionally enjoying a movie, um, even if I can point out flaws, I'll probably still give it a five star because it's just. I'm I'm not. I'm pretty critical of movies, but when it comes to rating. If you look at five star to mean I absolutely loved it and you should go watch it, there's a lot of movies I feel that way about. So that's how I rate movies. Everyone should just go watch all the movies. Yeah. That's the answer. Everybody just go watch movies. If you want to watch movies, just watch watch more movies. Go watch Kung Fu Master Jackie Chan. Don't do that. Don't do that one. Did I say it again? (laughs) Dang it. Let's not talk about that. It just keeps coming out of my face. Uh, <laughs> but no, I, I nearly picked um, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, which, as, hey. as a lot of people know, is, is actually one of my Wright favorite. Film. Yeah, Stephen Wright. That's a I always get Edgar Wright and Stephen yeah. Wright mixed up, like, constantly. It's really bad. <laughs> yeah, I love yeah. them both, but I can't keep them straight. But yeah, no, as everybody knows, that's one of my favorite movies, and I'll probably talk about it eventually, so I'm going to refrain from talking about it right now. But I chose a movie that... Um, is one of my favorites for sure and it's pretty do you ever get that where you see a movie like a recent movie and you're tempted to say that's one of the best movies i've ever seen but you don't want to you want to like give it like a few years to like you know for a while the revenant was on my top four favorite movies on letterbox and i took it off because i was like it's too recent i have to give it some time (laughs) to see how i really feel yeah understandable um, um, I almost, I, really good I damn near, near, uh, I damn near put, uh, 
Blade Runner 2049 on my four favorite movies. And then I thought, I need to give that like three years to really, yeah, to let, really let mature in my mind. Sit there yeah. Because it's like, I at, at the moment, I love that movie. It's a very visceral, emotion, re, emotional reaction yeah, whenever I I'd, think about it. But. Um, we'll get into Blade Runner in just a bit, but. Um, but uh, I gotta, movie. yeah, I gotta yeah. go. My favorite movie is, uh, my movie of the week is Birdman. 2014. Oh, Birdman, that's a great movie. Directed by Alejandro Gonzalez in Yeah, Yuritu. everyone knows Alejandro Gonzalez Iñárritu. Iñárritu. Yeah, that. Hopefully, I pronounced that right. Um, you know, Michael Keaton, Emma Stone, Zach Galifianakis, but the Edward Norton, of course. But the draw of the movie is not the cast; it's the cinematography. Well, it's it's the cast, the cast, and, and, and then, the cinematography, and then the hit. The, what makes you love the movie yeah, is the cinematography and the soundtrack. I talked about oh. I I talked about how so um, there will be I I talked about at one point in the uh, podcast about how there will be blood is the movie that made me love movies and uh, Birdman is a big influence on why I love cinematography as much as I do definitely because it is one of the most interesting like uniquely shot movies I've ever seen if you don't know what the i hesitate to say gimmick because it feels like more than a gimmick but if you don't know what the gimmick about the movie is it it's filmed to look like one shot and it's all done through incredibly long takes yeah. and some clever editing techniques yeah and um i think i remember reading this somewhere they were given like just these big old stacks of papers to just memorize all of the dialogue yeah. because they had to do so much reading and memorizing for their parts because a lot of it was done in one yeah. ginormous take and what what's amazing about it is the choreography and it's the to say choreography in a dialogue driven movie sounds weird but when you consider like it wouldn't no, be all that impressive there's a, a movie trilogy um and this is my shout out to a buddy of mine roberto roberto is that how you pronounce it i'm sorry if that's not how you pronounce it he's probably listening to this uh he loves this trilogy of movies called the before before trilogy i believe and it's like before sunrise before sunset before midnight i want to say that's what the three of them are called i have no clue what you're talking they're directed about. by Rich, richard linkladder and I, uh okay. or and man this is the episode of mispronouncing i'll things. take your word for it because i don't even know what but you're saying they're right similar to birdman in that it's a lot of long shots strung together but the thing about Birdman is rather than a lot of movies of this type where it's just like a static shot of two people talking, it's always moving. The camera's always swooping around everything and they're always like walking through hallways and there's people going left and right and it's all choreographed and it's beautiful to watch. It is. It's a technical marvel. It really is. I'm just, I'm just awestruck every time I watch that movie. It's... It's, Everybody needs to go see it's it. It's really unbelievable. And the soundtrack to it is oh, yeah. so good. Those like drums yeah, and Yeah, it's music, mostly it's just, just drum. Drum drums. Yeah, it's a lot of drums. <laughs> yeah. And it's just really good. So yeah, yeah. go definitely give that a watch. Yeah, yeah and the brilliant performances by everybody. Yeah, everybody does a great job. I love Edward Norton in it, and I love Michael yeah. Keaton in it, and I love Emma Stone in it. Everybody's yeah. so good. Um, oh, really and the movie's good. got a lot of um, subtext and like interesting ideas behind it, you know. And it's about you know. It's kind of weird. Yeah, it's it's very weird actually. And it's it's some artsy stuff that some mm. people will not enjoy, right? Um, such as my parents. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. you know, as like a general audience, I think it did pretty well. I think it was well received by the majority of everybody who saw it. Yeah, uh, just being interesting enough. Mm -hmm. uh, even though it is more of this artistic piece than it is yeah. like your average oh saturday night let's just go see a movie and it actually um it actually makes fun of that in the movie it really does and, and it's, it's there's it's a really specific cool. sequence i'm not going to spoil it but it's near the end of the movie where it's like oh it's like it breaks the fourth wall and, and okay i shouldn't spoil it but basically <laughs> it acknowledges what it is and it makes fun of what people want to see as opposed to what yeah. it is and that sounds super pretentious but it's it comes out it doesn't really come across that way it it's, does it's well. very 
entertaining. Yeah, it's very good. Uh, And it talks about themes of, you know, like, relevancy and aging and, like, how to stay relevant in this new era of technology, especially if you're very old school. Now let's talk about something relating to that. Okay. So we got got Michael Keaton, right? Right. And he is, in the movie Birdman, Birdman. Yes. Oh, and he is a washed up oh, right, superhero yeah. <laughs> now trying to make his way in the world, getting rid of the washed up superhero of this fake superhero named Birdman. Yeah. Michael Keaton played Batman. Yeah, that's the other interesting thing about Birdman. And now, yeah. not only has he come back into superhero movies, <laughs> right, yeah. but he's come back into superhero movies as a villain known as the Vulture, which is also a bird. Birdman, yeah. Is it a conspiracy? You know, life Im- imitates art sometimes. It's pretty crazy. It's like in 2014, everybody was making jokes about like, oh, haha, Birdman, Batman, Michael Keaton, you know, but then he played Vulture. In yeah, a, in what a... the heck? What's going on here? <laughs> he played a literal Birdman. What's going on here, man? <laughs> it's so crazy. This is like some Stan Lee deep down Illuminati shit. Yeah. Uh, you ready? I can smell it. <laughs> okay. That's about all I have to say about that. Oh, Do yeah. we want to touch on uh, Blade Runner? Um, yeah, briefly. Give it a um, tippy tap. You've seen Blade Runner now. I've seen it twice. No, I haven't. Okay. Well, let's move I've on then. I've experienced Blade Runner. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, basically, I loved Blade Runner. I kind of alluded to why I loved Blade Runner. In the most recent episode. It's real pretty. Real pretty. It uh, sounds real... Yeah. The soundtrack's incredible. I love Crazy the Crazy synth and some yeah. real... Blahs. It's almost like a Christopher mm-hmm. Nolan movie. Yeah, well, uh, you say that, but you saw... Um, Dunkirk, right? I did. Do you remember Dunkirk yeah, had that like together. crazy loud soundtrack? Yeah. Um, that was Hans Zimmer, and he did the soundtrack for... Twenty forty nine. How about that? Uh, him and another guy. I forget the other guy's name. I'm sorry. I'm just forgetting everything today. But uh, <laughs> hold on. I he he deserves credit. I'm gonna look him up. Well, Blade Runner is this interesting movie because it had like just real good actors. A kind of complex storyline, so it's a little confusing. And it's this sequel, not a remake of yeah. the. Uh, it's a sequel to the original Blade Runner. Yeah, it takes place quite a bit, quite a lot of time after. Yeah, about there's been 40 like, years. There's been an event 40 called... 40 years. About 40 years, yeah. It is 40 years. 40 years, exactly 40 years? Yes, I okay. believe so. Um, and it's it's cool, and what's the girl who plays the, uh, the his, like, AI wife? Uh, I don't know her name. I think I've seen her in other stuff. I, I, I know I've seen her in other stuff. I really liked her in that movie. I thought she did really good. Jared Leto. Benjamin Walfish did the is the other guy. I was gonna say that's not her name. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but Jared Leto, like what you said is that his performance in this made up for what he ended up doing to the Joker in Suicide Squad. Yeah. That's... And I completely agree with that. He was great in this. He movie. was really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was uh and and he didn't give a very over the top performance, but that's what I liked about it. Yeah, See, it Jared Leto went subtle. way too over the top with the Joker, like way too over the Let's top. Let's not get into Suicide Squad. This could be a two hour <laughs> yeah. long conversation. And and, <laughs> and he felt like a character. He didn't feel like Jared Leto. He yeah. felt like a character. Yeah. And he was very a, good. he was a very mysterious and menacing character, and I really liked him. Definitely. Yeah. Really super good villain. Um the only one character that both of us kind of found a disliking to was the other the replicant uh, lady replicant lady yeah. who was the like bad the replicant bad lady replicant yeah, yeah. she um, i just didn't really like her in it and i gave blade runner 2049 five stars and i love it but like i said before it has flaws like a lot of the movies i rate five stars oh, but yeah. if the movie uh, as a whole yeah Elicits, elicits such a happy reaction out of me. Gets those I can overlook things. some flaws. Because yeah. it's it's that's an amazing movie. Blade Runner 2049. The only lines where I was like, that's that could have been delivered well, 
that could have been delivered better were from this replicant lady. Yeah. Like otherwise, everything else, everybody else is great. There's not uh, a single other bad performance. Let's talk about the best actor of our time, uh, Dave Bautista. Dave Bautista, he was actually good in it. He, he was, was actually really, really good. good in it. <laughs> I was not expecting it. Love I Dave thought Bautista right Dave now. Bautista was going to be a throwaway character that was in the movie just because he's huge and they would have a fight scene. I didn't expect him to have like dialogue. I didn't expect him out to have good dialogue, but he did. It was pretty Dave crazy. Dave Bautista, yeah. I, I, oh my goodness, this guy! I got to give him credit. Like he went from. WWE, I mean, he's the next Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Yeah, probably. He's on his way. He's yeah. going to be the next big Disney star saying you're welcome all the time. Uh, and I, <laughs> I cannot wait till there's a musical starring Dave Bautista. I am excited. I want it. <laughs> I want it so bad right now. <laughs> what can I say except I'm Dave? <laughs> Get ready for the Bautista bomb! Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know how he talks. Mm. I didn't watch WWE. That's Colin's job. Yeah, that was, that was my job. My dad liked Dave. I'm Bates such a too. contra. I'm. I feel like I'm a contradiction of a person because I'm the. <laughs> I'm supposed to be the the pretentious one here, but gosh darn, I love me some WWE. I know, right? <laughs> and I've never really watched WWE. I liked Rey Mysterio because he looked cool. Yeah. Uh, Rey, Mysterio, Rey Mysterio is one of my favorites. I like. Um, we're gonna talk about WWE for the rest of the episode, that's all right. so you can click off. If Ric you don't Flair want. was kind of cool. <laughs> uh, not yeah. really, but my dad liked to talk about him. Every time he would talk about him, he'd be like, "I'm Ric Flair!" Woo! And I was just like, "Dang, that sounds cool!" Yeah. And then I realized, oh, he's like a he's a douche. Yeah, there are he's certain real there are douche. certain villains on WWE. Like, um, I think. Uh, Triple H was one of those. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I forget who the villains were. But there yeah. was like, there was Kane because Kane was the brother of Undertaker, and then two wrestlers were having a wedding on the ring, <laughs> and then Kane snuck out from uh -huh. under the altar and yeah. tra and like choke slammed the guy. <laughs> yeah, you tell me this every time you talk the, about WWE. It was the greatest moment in television history. <laughs> If you do, if you want to look up a, a great clip on YouTube, <laughs> look up Kane crashes WWE wedding or whatever. I, I, I'm sure it'll come up if you search that because <laughs> it was so great. Thing. He's just like peeking out from under yeah. the ring. He's like, Ooh, and then he comes up and he just like slap. Oh, it's so bad. <laughs> Uh, Doesn't he like WWE. come from the underneath too, like under yeah, it? from under like the altar. He and he like <laughs> like pokes his head out, and then he just like comes out, and the announcer's like, "Oh no, what's this?" And he's it's Kane. <laughs> just slams the guy. It's so bad. Oh, I love it. Oh boy, I wish I was watching WWE back when Dwayne the Rock Johnson was doing stuff. Yeah, because I I definitely wasn't at that point. Yeah, and apparently he was like. One of the coolest... He would put on concerts before the show. Really? Where he would sing about... This was like when he was a bad guy. And I only know this because I I like Dwayne The Rock Johnson so much. So I look up stuff about him. Yeah. He has shows where he goes out into the ring and he brings his guitar. And he's playing songs and he's like, Kentucky sucks in Kentucky. Nice. And it's yeah. been... Go look up... Dwayne The Rock Johnson concert. And then watch Didn't Moana. Get a chance. And then watch Moana because that's the same thing, basically. Anyway, I've got a... Uh, <clears throat> sorry to steer the conversation away, but I've a couple, got a couple movies to talk about that I all... Well, I have two movies and one TV show, all of which I've seen in the last. All right, week. let's hit it. Let's do this. Do you want to do the TV show first? Because I think we both know. know what I got it is. like four movies we need to talk about over here. Okay, too, so we gotta get uh, working let's, on these quick, movies. Let's quick fire it. Neo let's go bang bang. Neo Yokio. Go home. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next. <laughs> it's bad. We yeah. Don't watch it. James Neo Yokio Smith's is great. Voice. All, right. all the voice acting's terrible. Let me read. Could have been good if there was actually a decent thing behind it, but yeah. there isn't, and it's all in bad context, and it's terrible. Let me terrible, terrible. Let me read off the. Uh, voice you go right ahead. I'm leaving. Okay. Um. We got Jaden Smith. We got Jude Law. We got Susan Sarandon. We got uh, Jason Schwartzman. We got John DiMaggio. And they're all bad. We got Richard Iwadi. Who is Moss on IT, IT Crowd? Fantastic! He's the best part of that yeah. whole bang show. He plays like what eight characters? You got Steve Buscemi. I haven't even seen him. You got Stephen Fry. Awesome as well. Terrible movie. Yeah. Show. What show. Movie? Yeah. You got Willow Smith apparently. Will Smith in it? Willow Smith. Oh, that's not. As uh, good. you got Ray Wise. Ray Wise. Ray Wise. Who's Ray Wise. Son. Uh, he was uh main character of. No, um, he's uh. 
You've seen him. You've seen him in everything. All Here, right, look at the me, photo. Let me see. This guy. Oh, he's Satan. Satan? Sure, yeah. Oh, my God. He was in a show called Reaper, I think. Um, and he played literal Satan, and it was actually yeah. a really fun show. Not very good, but fun. He's in RoboCop. He was in uh, Firewalk with Me, which is the Twin Peaks movie. Um, he plays good anyway, Satan. Uh, animation in Neo Yokio is awful. The, the dialogue's terrible. Or, Ever, is, art, everything's bad. Yeah. The dialogue well, could have been good. But yeah. just the timing of everything, like the way they yeah. put the dialogue in there was just garbage. But it's so funny. It's so fun to watch. Is it? It is. It's like <laughs> one of... The, I haven't seen a better bad good anime. Oh. It's so perfect. Because everything's so stupid. It's like... And the, 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 the dialogue is oh. so stinted that it's just funny. <laughs> it's so bad. I would I, never watch that if it wasn't for you. You know that, right? I'm, yeah, I love it, honestly. And I probably won't finish it unless you watch it with me. Okay. Well, we can do that sometime. All right. Do you want to move on? I saw a movie. <laughs> no, I don't. Okay. Never mind. Let's say Move on. I saw, like, one of the weirdest movies I've ever seen in my entire life. What's it called? Um... And the movie club folks know what I'm talking about. It's Do you guys know what he's talking about? Virtuosity. 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 Here, I'll show you. Is a it as good as Lawnmower Man 2? <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> funny you should say that. Oh, Here. yeah, that's right. Virtuosity. Here's the poster. That's Russell Crowe. That's Denzel Washington. Russell Crowe plays a video game character that escapes the video game and becomes a serial killer. And Denzel Washington has to hunt him down. And Denzel Washington's a criminal, but they get him to hunt down the video game because he knows the video game better than anybody or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> who directed I, this? I, it directed it directed film. by a man named Brett Leonard, who also directed The Lawnmower Man. Really? Yeah. Oh my God! That's I know, right? How did I? I'm getting too good at this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know if he directed The Lawnmower Man Two, which is the good one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he but he did direct oh, Lawnmower no. Man. <laughs> oh no. And um he uh it's it's just so weird. It's Russell Crowe you have to watch this movie for Russell Crowe's performance cuz I'm I like used Russell Crow. I'm used to Russell Crowe being this like really stoic guy, you know what I'm talking about? He's pretty restrained, yeah, but he's anything but in virtuosity. He's like a cartoon character. He's like so that's what insane. He's, supposed to be, though, right? he's yeah, he yeah, I guess. Is I don't it a know. good movie? No, out not of five, really. What not would really. you rate it? I rated it two stars out of five. All right. Because it's which is four out of ten. It's got some. It's a bad movie. Don't get me wrong. It's a really bad movie. <laughs> but it's just it's just so interesting to watch because Russell Crowe gives the weirdest performance. It's like. Nick Cage levels of energy. It's, in fact, he's like he puts Nick Cage to shame. He's so <laughs> ridiculously over the top. It's incredible. But does he scream about bees? N no, but he screams about other things. Does he scream about wanting to get the in Declaration of Independence? Yes, actually, oh, that's uh, well, that happens. Then yeah, sure, better. Yeah, better no, than better, Cage, better than Nicholas Cage for sure. And it's just wow. It's just such a movie, man. It's I really can't explain it more. Watch it with the understanding that it's really bad, but just <laughs> enjoy the the, the performance of, Everybody, of Russell Crowe because it's just crazy. Now, now we keep telling you go see um, go see Kung Fu Master. Yeah, um, and we keep telling you to see all these really bad movies because mm -hmm. we want you to hate yourself as much as we hate ourselves right. and. This is no exception, except for the fact that this is a good kind of bad movie. Yeah, sort of, yeah. It's so unbelievably over-the-top and cheesy that you just can't help but enjoy it. I'm gonna go watch it right now. Speaking of over-the-top and cheesy, I also saw another pretty bad movie that I ended up enjoying called Wishmaster. Which is uh, which is uh, Wes uh, Craven? What what thing was going on at your movie club this week? I don't know. And these were both movie club movies. Uh, Go follow them on Reddit. Um, I quick shout out to the uh, podcast. How did this get made? Uh, on and my movie club, we discuss 
the bi-weekly picks made by this podcast, like just random bad movies that they talk about. Yeah. And the movie of last week was uh, Virtuosity. And uh, Wishmaster was a user-suggested thing. <laughs> of course. And and not user, it was uh, it was decided by the moderators, but it was decided by one guy. And we all, like, signed off on it. And I gotta say, the Wishmaster himself, the uh, the villain of the movie called the Wishmaster, uh-huh. he's, like, the most entertaining thing about the movie. Him and the fact that there's some crazy practical gore effects, a lot of practical gore effects that are pretty cool, especially for 97. Uh, here, if you want to see a poster. I don't. Be oh. careful what you wish for. And it's um, <laughs> it's a 97 horror movie. Wes Craven has something to do with it. Although I'm looking at IMDb and it doesn't... It's, he Is didn't... it Ben Kingsley? It kind of looked like Ben no, Kingsley. <laughs> no, it's not Ben Kingsley. I'm looking at IMDb and supposedly Wes Craven did not direct or write it. I knew he had something to do with it, but I don't know what. Maybe he produced right. it or something. Uh, we have to cut here. Okay. Um, will you look that up? I'm gonna go take a dump. All right. Uh, this is an emergency. I swear to God, I do you want me, don't you, have to at this time. Do you want me to cut or do you want me to keep talking? Keep talking. All you right. Know, I don't care. I'm okay. Just be over here. All right. Well, okay. It's the solo podcast I now. But my bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Josh is uh, attending to other matters. I guess I can um, just. The Wishmaster himself, the the bad guy, is like one of the most hilarious horror villains I have ever seen. He's amazing. <laughs> and it's and it's I I stress that this movie is really boring without him. Like any scene that doesn't have him in it or doesn't have some crazy gore effect is just awful. But he really makes the movie, and uh, I suggest everybody go see it. Uh, it's again, it's not a not a very good movie, but it's a fun movie, and that's what counts. Anyway, uh, I wasn't really planning on talking about this uh, next point, but um, I did also see uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and there's really nothing to say about it that hasn't. Yeah, yeah, I did. Josh is. <laughs> Josh is yelling at me from the bathroom. I want to see that one. Um, I saw it for the second time just a couple days ago. And um, there's nothing to say about it that hasn't been said already, but it's one of the best horror movies ever made, as um, as a, uh, our friend Zach uh, said. One? What? Is that the 80s one? No, 70s, but yeah. I don't know if the mic can pick you up. It's, uh, Josh is yelling questions at me. It came out in the 70s, uh, 74, I think, and... Um, it's really great at um, horror without, like, explicit gore. Now, you may think, you know, the series is known for explicit gore, of course. But the first entry is really not all that explicit. There's a lot of implied violence. Um, and yet it's still very terrifying, especially for the era. And everybody should go check it out. What are you talking about? Next time you guys are just going to have to join me in there. Okay, yeah. I'll bring, bring the mic next time. <laughs> yes, please. Um... So, yeah, I've wanted to see that movie, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre from the 70s. Then, yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that was the first one. Yes. Yeah, I've been wanting to see that forever, and I still haven't gotten the chance. Really good. I recommend it. Um, I'm watching a lot of horror movies this month, because, of course, it's uh, October. And um, that uh, still remains one of the better ones I've seen from that decade. Cool. So Yeah. I really want to. I plan on buying it sometime. I own almost every other horror movie. I ended up buying... This big old pack of horror stuff, mm. um, and it had Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 2010 or something like that. So it was right. one of the remakes, and it's supposed to not be very good. But yeah, horror remakes typically aren't great. I haven't seen it yet, so I, I can't say anything personal experience. But just the yeah. general public says it's kind of garbage. Yeah, but I'm okay with it being garbage. I like garbage horror movies. Okay, you got a couple of movies to talk about. I you want to shoot through those? I do have a couple <laughs> movies to talk about. So. <clears throat> What day was it? Last Friday? Yeah, this is Tuesday. Last Friday, I ended up going to a theater up in the cities to go oh, see right. this movie called American Satan. Mm, okay. 
And I, I've heard the name of that, and I know it came out recently, but I know nothing else about it. Like, literally nothing. Is it a horror movie? No. Okay. Well, let's see. What does IMDb call it? It calls it a drama music thriller. Hmm. So, okay. <laughs> That's interesting. Now, Continue. Now, let me start off with, with this movie's bad. Really? Yeah. Okay. I didn't like it at all. Here, I'm just going to look it up on D- IMDb so I have some context. Or, uh, um, yeah, I'll just look at it on your phone. All right. Um, it is a, a movie made by a director who is only known for really making oh. live movies These act- of concerts. This cast definitely looks like your average these are models not actors cast. oh yeah you know tori black the porn star i don't but i'll take your word for it she's a porn star and they just okay. got porn stars in the and movie she's just because in why it. not okay they got andy beersnack from black malcolm Bride. mcdowell malcolm mcdowell's in it huh? yeah he's satan literal satan all right cool let me get to that later all right you got andy beersnack you got the guy from asking alexander i don't remember his name wow this i wouldn't even know like his face such a great cast and honestly, none of the okay, Andy Beersnack and the guy from Asking the Alexandria and the other guys who are acting in this movie, like in the band, none of the acting was that bad. Like in the end, it wasn't the worst acting from those guys at all. Yeah, it wasn't good acting, but it wasn't mediocre. Okay. Um, but the story was garbage. Everything was garbage. The soundtrack was garbage. The camera work was garbage. Let me talk about the good parts. The things that I thought this movie did well. Okay. I think that the director did a really good job portraying what it might be like being in a rock band and on the road. All right. And what I mean by this is this entire story is about Andy Beersnack, this this young old, this young little pup. Straight out of some nowhere, he goes to California to pursue his dreams, and then he gets a couple other guys to come with him. Some guys from Britain, some guys from not Britain, uh, and they end up making a band, and they're trying to get big, so they go to the Rainbow, they go to, you know, Whiskey A Go-Go, they go to all these, like, famous bars. And then they, like, make it big. Why? Satan! I got it. (laughs) I hate it. Cool. It was really bad. So, rock music, the devil's music. Yeah. You know? you know what could have been really cool about this movie? Yeah. Having actual rock stars in a show, or in a movie, about rock stars showing and portraying the troubles that someone might have being a new rock star trying to get on the scene and trying not to be on drugs, trying not to be crazy promiscuous because of stupid fans. Mm. That would have been a more interesting show than Satan. All right. Yeah. For no reason. You have Satan for no reason. And then you have this guy, (laughs) random black dude. His name's Gabriel. He's the archangel. He's there. Okay. Why? (laughs) That sounds really weird. Why? Why is he there? I don't know. I I don't. I don't know either. Well, if it's a, um, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. You put Satan, you need Gabriel. It's the, uh, it's the, uh, I, Constantine. <laughs> I, I didn't see a reason for this to yeah. need any religious tones whatsoever. Uh, what, you saw that poster and you didn't think it would have anything to do with Satan? Yeah, well, I knew, <laughs> okay, so the band releases a song right. and, and an album called American Satan. Okay. So it would have made sense if they wouldn't have had that. But there was no reason for these, like, supernatural Satan crap happening. Like, it could have been a decent film showing about what the life of a rocker on the road would be. Okay. But they didn't. Instead, they made it bad. And I didn't like it. And it was bad. Don't see it. It was All $6. Right. I saw it for free because Alex got it. But you, seem, you seemed so intent on going to see it. Was it because of Alex? Did she want to yeah, see no, it? Yeah, no. She really wanted to see it because okay. she's a huge fan of Ad- Adam Beersnack. Got it. Um, just loves Blackfield Brides. And so she had it at two tickets because she was going to go to the said Asking Alexandria, or is it both these both. guys? Okay. There's two, two big name bands. Yeah. Um, so yeah, she had two tickets and she asked me if I wanted to go because whoever bailed on her. Um, and I said, sure. And we went and we made a day out of it and we went all over the place and cool. got food and went and saw a movie that was not great. The all best right. part about the entire movie, actually, at the very end, they had the credits rolling, and while the credits were rolling, they had quotes from famous artists. So, mm-hmm. Jimmy Page, um, 
I think Elvis Presley might have been on there, but just a bunch of famous artists from a bunch of different bands. And just reading quotes from guys like you could do online um, for free was was really cool. Okay. <laughs> that was the coolest part. It, well, I'll, uh, I'll probably avoid this one. Uh. Yeah, if you can see it for free, maybe. There's All a right. lot of boobs. Oh, okay. If you enjoy boobs. Yeah, who doesn't? Um, Except for gay men and straight women. Sometimes. I mean, even those guys sometimes like boobs. Yeah, I suppose. Like, you don't have to just like a gender to enjoy boobs. That's true. Like, what if you had just this... Fat... Anyway, so The Matrix. <laughs> Back to The Matrix. Uh, did you see... What is it? You saw Reloaded now? I've seen all three now. Oh, okay. I've finished What them. do you think of the trilogy? So... So... So I saw the first Matrix a while ago, and then I watched half of the of the Matrix, uh, and now I'm coming back. I don't remember if I said I watched the other half, of it, but I have now. Definitely have yeah. watched the other half where he has a katana. <laughs> that was the coolest part, is he had a katana. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and then Matrix Revelations. <laughs> I really don't like the third one. Matrix Reload is, it Reloaded is okay. Matrix Revelations, that's the name of the third one? Yeah, really it is. Really not great. Um, no, it's yeah. not. It was... It, I mean, I really, really, really like um, Mr. Smith. Like, if there's one thing to be taken out of all of the Matrix movies as a whole, I love Mr. Smith. I think, I like that actor. I think even yeah. though he had that dumb face, he's like... <laughs> um, and the clenched teeth yeah oh my like even so like i still loved him and like his acting even if it's bad and over the top i loved it i loved oh, yeah, all uh, of it yeah he's uh that actor's name is uh hugo weaving he's hugo great. weaving i love yeah. hugo weaving he's, he's really, really good. good he's really good in v for vendetta as lord well. of the rings man and lord of the rings for get sure. it watch it enjoy yeah but yeah just if there's if there's one thing to watch the other two Matrix movies for, it's Hugo Weaving, and that's it. Just yeah. him and his Dragon Ball Z fighting at the end of the third one, and him and his Mr. Anderson, yeah. and everything else he does is, is fine by me, and I enjoyed it. And the best part about the third one was actually there's just a million Hugo Weavings. Oh, right, yeah. I forgot about and, that. And you know what? That's what made that movie bearable to me. Okay, yeah. Um, and never mind the fact that that whole um, fight scene looks awful, like CGI. -wise. Oh yeah, no, it's like, terrible. Yeah, I mean it's a it's an identical copy to Dragon Ball Z fight scene, I believe with Frieza. If I, I'm, I'm just I remember hearing and reading about uh, it being, but I don't remember who. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it looked terrible. But yeah, Hugo Weaving. Yeah, and um. <laughs> One of the, like the most insulting things about the third Matrix movie is in the first Matrix movie they established that the machines are so powerful. The only thing they can do to take out one of them is activate that EMP on the ship. Mm -hmm. And then, and then in the third one they have like huge mechs oh like gosh. blasting through. Let me tell you of how much fun that was. Yeah. It was garbage yeah. don't get me wrong it was garbage but just like seeing all these mechs pointing at this hole in the sky and just like unloading i'm just like <laughs> this is the stupidest thing yeah. i've seen yeah and then there was that one i believe he's a mexican guy i don't remember but there's a scene where like there's one guy left in the mech and he is just like there's like this giant tendril of all the robots yeah. coming at him and then he's, and he's just, just like, like blowing <laughs> I was crying. I was laughing so hard. Yeah. And it was, like, there was a little bit of fun there. Like, even if it is a garbage yeah, movie. It's dumb fun, but, like, it it just kind of, like, goes back on everything that, would, <laughs> oh, yeah. that made the Matrix story -wise, great. Story-wise, you know? pointless. Don't look for At, a story. Stories, you know, like, story's bad. The action is nowhere near as ground as, grounded as it was in the Matrix, which is what made the Matrix great. It was fantastical, yeah. but it was pretty grounded, you know? It's just way out there in the revelations, and it's yeah, just definitely. Not, it's just not engaging. So, when watching the Matrix, my yeah. suggestion to you is care only for Hugo Weaving, uh, the Mexican guy with the giant mech, yeah, and um, Hugo Weaving, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I I don't I. This is probably one of the movies you were gonna talk about, but um. 
there's a little inkling that apparently you and I have differing opinions on the new X-Men movie. A little inkling? Yeah. You mean like from Splatoon? Yeah. All right. There's there when we were when we were discussing um when we were setting up and Josh was like, "Oh, we should talk about that new uh X-Men movie coming out." I the think new looks, I'm, I'm really pumped for it and I'm like Okay, are you? That face <laughs> doesn't translate, I tell you. <laughs> Basically, um, what are you excited about? Let me tell and, you. And it's called X-Men The New Mutants. Yep. It, yeah. Well, actually, um, there is no X-Men in the title. It's just, it's the, just new the New Mutants. Mutants. It's kind of a Logan-type um, deal. I'm, I'm so excited. So, the reason being is I don't care about you and your stupid trailer. <laughs> you know what? I am I am so excited. No, I'll... And it might be garbage. I don't care at this point in time. Okay. Why I'm excited is because the director of the New Mutants, Josh Boone, who really isn't notable for anything but a fault in our stars. Yeah, yeah. I... So he has, like, nothing under his belt, especially not anything related to comic books or horror or action or anything. And we should say, uh, the New Mutants is a horror movie, oddly enough. It is a horror movie. Yeah. Which is... Beyond exciting for me. Oh, yeah. He, I will agree with you. The concept of an X-Men horror movie is really cool. <laughs> it's mind-blowing. It's mind. really cool. Yeah. Super pumped. Now, let me tell you why. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Josh Boone, he seems like a cool guy. I've looked up a couple interviews and a couple different things, and he right. is a legitimate fan of the Mutant series. He read the comic books as a kid. This right. seems like a really cool fan project being put together with some really cool actors. Okay. I'm going to slap you if you keep giving me that face. <laughs> All right. No, okay, go on. <laughs> what is your issue right now? I mean, what cool actors? There, you got Maisie Williams, right? Like... I really like Maisie Williams, this, like, uh, Anna that, Taylor Joy. That I don't know who that is. Yeah, you do. She's the lead main character of The Witch. Oh, okay. Sounds good. <laughs> I'm done. I mean, she, I, done. I guess I'm she was mad. good. I guess she was good in The Witch. All right, I'll give you that one. There's he, the kid from Stranger Things. I yeah, and guy. other than that, I don't really know anybody. But right. I'm okay with that. Okay. I'm okay with that. But the one thing about this that I thought was weird is. Um, we were talking about how it would be cool if they took those kid mutants from Logan and made a movie about them. I don't think that's what this is. I think no, these are different mutants. Yeah. Yeah. So, kind of a sidetrack, but... Um, and there... You know what's weird is that's not the only X-Men movie coming out next year. There's yeah. also Dark Phoenix or whatever with, like, the whole, like, cast of Apocalypse. Like, so apparently they're not done with that whole wreck. <laughs> I'm done with that because I still Me haven't too. seen Apocalypse, yeah. so... <laughs> Um, but this, it's new, it's exciting, it's a horror movie, and the reason, okay, so the only reason why they're letting them do a horror movie with X-Men titles over it is because of the success of Deadpool and Logan. Yeah. Because of those tonal changes between those movies and what the Marvel MCU is used to, like this just action thriller that has yeah. comedy in it. And then they made Deadpool, which was a strictly adult comedy movie yeah. with action elements. So it was kind of flipping the script on that. And then they released Logan, another R-rated drama. drama. Yeah. And it was fantastic. If you Logan get a chance, is excellent. Go, go see, see Logan. It. Yeah. Um, buy it. They have a Noir copy, so you can watch it in black and white. Yeah, it's yeah. really cool. Noir. Do you say Noir? Noir. 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 It's like yeah. New Orleans. Yeah. Sort of. Noir. Yeah. New Orleans. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so now that because of those, they're now letting X Men. This typically, you know, the comics were all over the place with tonal changes, but the movies so far, all they've had are these actions. Like it's just action after action after action movie, and now we're finally getting to see horror elements, and I am pumped. I just, I really want to see what they do with it. I I agree with everything you just said. That's definitely for sure. What I'm saying, I agreed with you. <laughs> Don't give me that look. <laughs> I agree with you. I agree what? with everything you just okay, said. Okay, then please tell me what your issue is. I watched the trailer for yes. The New Mutants, and that's what my issue is. It, it, It's horror, right? But just the fact that it's horror isn't enough. I would like good horror, and this looks like cheap, crappy, teen exploitation, jump scare... It looks like Happy Death Day. It looks bad. I it don't looks know. real bad. 
I it, there's Did you not like there's not the, a single point there's not like a single jump scare in the trailer and by the way the trailer's just a bunch of jump scares and there's not a single jump scare in the trailer that I didn't roll my eyes and sigh at because it's just it's just lame it's just all like tired lame garbage and maybe maybe the trailer is just is maybe it's a mother situation where the trailers like building this movie up to look terrifying and it's going to come out and it's going to turn out to be good i'm hoping that's the case because the stuff that wasn't horror related in the trailer there wasn't really any particularly bad acting that i saw um and it, like i said the concept in the movie is great it's just really i don't like the horror elements in the trailer it just looks super cheesy and it's now, not like <laughs> let me tell you why i enjoyed the trailer okay and it's not the jump scare thing i can agree with that jump scares are getting lame they're getting old i'd like yeah. to get a new era of horror movies in here right. where we can finally get to a horror movie that is actually scary and not yeah. jump and scary we, and we've seen a few of those recently so clearly they're on the, on the rise well there's mother there's uh it's not even a horror movie i wouldn't call it a horror yeah movie. i suppose there's it comes at night that's also not really a horror movie i have it now i bought it and i oh, cool. haven't seen it but i want to do you want to uh, watch it yeah with i do want to watch okay. it with you are you free we today should. yes all right let's go or we're gonna see that after all this. right <laughs> ending podcast here we'll be back <laughs> oh by the way this is almost an hour and i know we i said we weren't gonna do a double podcast here's what i'm thinking Let's just make this one podcast, but just a long one. How's I'm okay with that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just, that's going to be our standard going forward, probably. We we'll just right. keep going until we're done. Keep man. going. I didn't mean to derail it. No, keep going. it's all good. So I, Let me... I, here's the thing I didn't like the trailer, but I would love, I'm not like biased against the movie. Mm -hmm. I want it to be good as much as you yeah. do. But I really want you to to hear like what you thought about it, you know. Yeah. Like I, I want to I want to hear another perspective other than my own. I, I completely agree. Jump okay. scares are old. They're boring. They're bad. Yeah. What's really exciting is, do you remember the scene in the trailer? And I know this is going to be spoilers for the trailer. So if you don't want to know anything at all, cut out now. Cut out before we even started all this nonsense. Yeah. Skip um, to like I don't know, like five minutes in the future or something. Yeah. yeah. But there's, there's that scene where there's the people, like, coming out from the walls. A classic throwback to the Friday the 13th, or, sorry, Nightmare on Elm Street movie where he's coming from the wall. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do know it's, yeah. He was talking about how that's a, a direct homage to the old Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. And then after that, he proceeded to talk about how he tried his very best to make almost everything a practical effect in this movie and that's Which and that's admirable is I will something say. i nearly cried hearing because you cannot find movies anymore without practical effects and that's real sad and i will say um this is a little bit of a tangent but it, it does relate um when we say i don't i don't like to demonize cg all that much i love practical effects as much as the next guy but if you take a movie like blade runner 2049 it's done perfectly i gotta it's say a, it's a best, great makes a practical best CG, cg i've ever seen in, in probably in yeah. blade runner it everything looks real it's yeah. great <laughs> it's it was really like amazing visually yeah. but but anyway keep going about but there's that. a lot of movies that do cg <clears throat> wrong or it's too cheap right yeah and they don't put enough into it they don't use cg as a, a tool to improve practicality they Instead, use it they as use a tool it... to replace practicality exactly and, and that's, that's a not real good. issue yeah. and it's happened in a lot of things like the hobbit or, right yeah you know that's at least the most glaring issue in my head when it comes to cg is the hobbit it's like that's um, that's the mo that's like the biggest argument against uh the cg that i can think of that lord of the rings trilogy which came out a full decade before the hobbit mm -hmm. looks way better everything looks yeah. so much better and then the hobbit just looks like garbage because it's way too much well, cgi and when the lord of the rings did end up <laughs> having cg because there was the part right, yeah. with the huge armies just crossing fields and fields but it, it was good but CG, it was so you know? it, they would they worked on little segments where they would make soldiers and then they mm -hmm. would zoom it out they would make yeah. it smaller and then they would copy and paste it and then they'd put discrepancies so it wouldn't look like an exact pattern or at least they would right, try yeah. to make that happen so they used it in a very good way. Yes. Which isn't what they did in The Hobbit. <laughs> yeah, in The Hobbit, it's just everything's on a green screen, you know. Yeah, it's... everything's a green screen. Characters have been replaced by CG. Everything has been replaced. Yeah. It's all CG, and it makes me sad. Yeah, so and that's a sort of a tangent. But if you say that the director's trying to do 
practical yeah. effects. Like that's I'm, admirable I'm so at the very excited. least. And apparently the the new mutants is going to be a trilogy. And each one of the New Mutants is going to be a different style of horror movie. So it's kind of like the Cornetto trilogy. Kind of, yeah. But I think it's actually going to be a trilogy where it's three okay, movies yeah. that are connected. Um, I don't really know what he means by different style of horror movie. Well, New Mutants um, kind of gives the vibe of like a home invasion slash like haunted house type Yeah, well, type they're in movie. like an asylum. Yeah, yeah. Um, for it's a, it's a claustrophobic now, like haunted house type deal. Let me tell you my favorite part of the trailer. Beside, like, the least favorite is the jump scares, but my favorite part of the trailer is what made me want to see this the most, probably, because there are so many movies out right now that have been doing trailers really poorly, and yeah. it just is driving me crazy at this point. What they did in New Mutants is they showed the premise of the movie. So it's a mutants in a horror setting, in an asylum, and that's cool. And that's all I know. Yeah. Do you know anything else other than that? Not really. No. Not really. So, yeah, it didn't and give that's, me a lot, yeah. Awesome! I don't know any of the plot, and that's how trailers should be. That's fair, yeah. Every movie trailer I've seen otherwise, except for Mother, which was batshit crazy of a movie trailer that was yeah. made horribly. Anyway, every other movie trailer has been garbage. The the flippin' Justice League trailers all infuriate me with how much they spoil of the movie and the plot, yeah, and yeah. they just throw it the, to face. The new trailer for Pacific Rim Uprising... Here, I'm going to put a little spin on what I say every 20 seconds of this show. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, don't. Don't go see it because it's... It's the whole it's thing. Bad. Yeah, it's like the new trailer for Pacific Rim Uprising. It spoils so much stuff that would have been so much cooler just to see in the movie. It's, and It's, it's like, just yeah. the whole movie yeah. condensed into a two-minute trailer. Yeah. So and it's infuriating. Yeah. People need to understand that when you make a trailer, it should show you a premise of the movie. So in Pacific Rim example, you should Pacific Rim. Pacific Rim. Uh, you should <laughs> you should show giant robots. You should show yeah. big old monsters, and that's about it. Yeah, there, there I bet there's be even a whole even lot still else. like if there's something special about the giant monsters or robots. You can hint at it in the trailer, but don't just straight up show it. Because, like, yeah. there's something about that that it's just special to see it for the first time in the theater. It's, and they spoil some stuff in that trailer. It's, so. it's like if you would take... It's like the oh, the, the first trailer... Oh. Okay, this, this may be considered a spoiler, but if you haven't seen Batman v Superman... If you were going to see Batman v Superman, oh you've goodness, seen it yeah. at this point. So I'm just so. gonna... The first, there's that one trailer of Batman v Superman where they just showed Doomsday. They showed Doomsday in the trailer. And why would you do that? And it was such an awful choice that there was like a fan edit where they just cut out any mention of Doomsday. And it was a much better trailer. Yeah. There was, I mean, it was still no not a great trailer, but it's like, it's just, we that's such a reveal that I don't get why. We understand Doomsday is a big character and yeah. it's going to help draw in people who know Doomsday. But is that any reason to make really bad trailers? Yeah. Because, like, if people wanted to know about it, then people will go watch it. It's Batman v Superman. It's Batman and Superman. People are going to see it no matter what. Mm, yeah. No matter what. And so That's when true. they see it, they're going to find out, oh, my God, Doomsday's in this. Even if it was horrible, uh, they're yeah. going to find out, and they're going to be amazed. The worst. For whatever reason. And then yeah. they're going to tell their friends, and then their friends are going to tell their friends, and it's going to go viral. It's going to go everywhere. Yeah. So there's no reason to have to put that in the trailer. Yeah. Especially in a movie like that. Yeah. It's dumb. Yeah. So, I, yeah. So, okay, I think I have a little more confidence in the new mutants now yeah. that, that you've put it in that perspective and i get it it's just, i hope i do i i did a decent job i really hope the movie isn't a bunch of schlocky jump scares because that's what's portrayed in the trailer and that's that's what horror movies are now yeah like there really hasn't been a lot of like even it yeah it is just jump scare after jump scare it feels and, like and a really with, with it's it, good it's I good loved jump it. scares. I, I thought it was a really fun movie but it feels it's so many jump scares, and it does a really good job making it kind of feel like one of those haunted house rides where you're yeah, going, right. and then jump scares. It's like, oh, The cool. thing with it is, like, the jump scares were less frightening than they were just cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're just so entertaining. I would love to do a whole episode on It too, by the way, but there's just so much stuff to talk about. So let's just, yeah, let's we'll, just cut we'll out here. It's very good. Sometime. Go see It. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's fun. Um, Actually, I want to bring this up for one second. Yeah. Did you hear about the Friday the 13th movie that was going to be coming out this Friday the 13th this year? You said something about it, but I forget what you said. Um, Wasn't it that, like, because of Mother I is think why it, was it got because canceled? because of Mother it got canceled. Okay. 
which was kind of a bummer. My reason being is, if that is true, which I'm not saying it is because now I'm not sure because it's been a while since I've seen the information, right. but for whatever reason, Friday the 13th got canceled and it was no longer going to be released at this point in time, especially not on Friday the 13th. Like, it would have been, you know, what was it, last week yeah. or two weeks ago or whatever it was. I don't know what day it is. Um, what's it's the day? 17th. Now, Mother was paired up with It. Yeah. Which is also a god-awful pairing, because they're thinking, oh, we're right, going to yeah. have these two same scary movies. You could do, like, an awesome double feature. <laughs> that was actually... That was actually... I wish we would have done that double feature, because they're actually two really good movies. But Again, completely we, we are completely different. Way different. It, like, like you said earlier, I mean, I don't want to... I don't want to spoil Mother, because I think if you haven't seen it, and that's actually a very likely, a big likelihood that you haven't seen it, because you probably heard it's bad. Oh my it's goodness. It's not what I call a horror movie. Think about that going into $33 million it. Yeah. Dollars went into the making of it, and it made $8 million on the day yeah. it released, or on the opening so, weekend. Yeah. And then, as of right now, it's only broken even. Yeah. Oh it's uh, I, I get mad every time I think about. Well, that. it's just poor marketing. You, you got to blame the marketing department and so, the fact that like, if so many of those people who felt deceived, they're like, "This isn't at all what I wanted to see." Oh yeah, and then which just, is fair. They you just know, tear it apart on the. If internet, you see too, a trailer then. for Mother and you see that, and then you sit through a two and a half hour, was it two and a half hour? Or maybe it's just two hour. You sit through a two hour Darren Aronofsky psychological drama you're like what did i just see i was yeah. expecting something more along the lines of it so it's two very good horror movies that are on complete opposite ends of the spectrum yeah mother well, so much so that i barely call they, it a horror movie they could have made it way better if they would have released mother either way earlier or yeah like november ish you know somewhere in that spectrum but if they would have See, and this is the the craziest thing. If they if Mother is what affected Friday the Thirteenth, which now I'm I'm getting more shaky every time I think about it, but okay. I might be right. Um, let's just say it is for the sake of my conversation. All right, sounds um, good. If Friday the Thirteenth would have come out on Friday the Thirteenth, and Mother would have been put earlier or later, doesn't matter when, just not with it. <laughs> No matter what, if you think about it, no matter what, people would have went and seen Friday the 13th on Friday the 13th, and that would have broken way more box office records, no matter what. It would have made more money. Yeah. Way more than $8 million. Yeah. It, it just, oh, yeah. It speaking just of, it, it um, is the highest grossing horror movie of all time now. Exactly. Right? Yeah. It would have blown up. It would have gotten so so big yeah. and compared to what mother ended up doing because it was paired and so badly timed and so badly advertised they made a horrible decision if that was what ended up happening with friday the 13th and mother uh not that i really want a new friday the 13th because who knows it might have been terrible it might have been great i don't know yeah. but i'm just saying that whoever made the decision to cancel it wasn't very smart <laughs> right yeah Maybe it was it that replaced Friday the 13th. In that Maybe. case, good job. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Never mind. Cancel everything. We're ruining yeah. it. We're, <laughs> we're cutting it all out. Not actually. Yeah. Got any more movies to talk about? Not really. I mean, um, I'm glad we got to talk about the new mutants. And this is the nice thing about us having a podcast. That's one of those movies that hasn't come out yet. You can just hear our thoughts about it going forward until yep. it eventually comes out. And we'll have something concrete to say about it. Have you seen the new Justice League trailer? I have avoided it intentionally. Good. Why? Don't see it. Okay. Yeah. I won't. I won't. <laughs> it's, yeah. Don't. Same same deal as with man, Batman v Superman. It just um, gives away too much or... It definitely shows more than it should, but yeah. it's not as bad as the old older trailers because now that it's under a new direction, I think it's actually doing better. That's not saying good, but yeah. better. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping. God, I'm hoping. Yeah. I'm just hoping. Yeah. That's that's all I gotta say about it. I'm hoping. Fair enough. I want I want it good. I want it good. So do I. I, I mean, Cyborg, I, uh, I cool. like I like Justice League as much as the next bloke. What? You seem really excited about something. I forgot to say, the new Flash looks really cool. Oh, yeah. Sure. I don't know if you care about the Flash. <laughs> not, I like the Flash. Not really, but um, yeah. Uh, the new Flash looks cool. And they are coming out with a new Flash movie, which I believe 
Now, this could be really cool and world-changing right here, but the new Flash movie didn't have, like, a subtitle. It was just called Flash Movie. Um, mm. And now I believe they called it Strike Point oh. or First... What's it called? Uh, Flashpoint. Flashpoint. Right. Flat, yes. So, do you know what that means uh, for if the they're doing DCU? the Flash, the Flashlight arc from the comics? Yes, but do you know what that means? Not really. I just, I know a little bit about Flashpoint, but I don't know, like, the context of it. Um, okay, so I was talking to my, my comic book friend, and we're gonna have right. him on sometime. And, and he was telling me what that entire arc is about, so if anything's wrong, yeah. yell at him if you find him. Um, but it basically is him going back in time... Uh, trying to fix whatever, and then he ends up resetting the DCU. Right. So, if the new Flash movie goes off of the comics and it resets oh. the DCU... DC, you bastards. Woo! You know what that means, right? New Superman, they're, new Batman, they're retconning new everything. Woman, they'll retcon everything. They'll retcon everything. Do oh. you know how, how exciting this movie is to me? <laughs> Do you understand? Because you, you hate the DCU so far, right? I hate the DCU so yeah. far, and I haven't seen Wonder Woman. I'm sure it's good. I want to yeah. watch it. I really do. People say it's good. I want to like it. Yeah. But I mm. haven't seen it yet. I plan on it. Yeah. So just hold your hold your yelling at me. But st the Superman movie, the Batman v Superman, garbage. Right. I, yeah. I hated them. I blocked them out of my memory. I didn't like them that much. Yeah. So if the new Flash movie ends up being where they reset the DC cinematic universe. Whoa, well, I mean, what's to say that the next one won't be crap, too? You know? I know, but I also don't like the actors for Batman. Like, I don't like Ben Affleck. Yeah, and I um, <laughs> I like Ben Affleck as an actor, but there's all these allegations about him recently that it's, like, it's a little weirder liking him as an actor. What do you mean that? Well, he's um, he's been, uh, you know, there's been allegations about sexual assault oh. committed by him. And... Uh, same thing has been happening with his, Casey Affleck, his brother, wow. and everybody's starting to hate those two. But what I hey, like I've to do—I've already been on this boat, man. What I like to do—I didn't even know about that. Yeah. <laughs> what I like to do is I like to try to separate the Definitely. actor from the controversy, and I think that's a good idea. And I like Ben Affleck as an actor, but it's just you know like. Something about it, you lose a little bit of respect for them. Like, Definitely. like, look, I still like John Tron, even after all the 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 drama, the, and the drama about whatnot. him. Yeah. yeah, I still like him. I still like his content, and I avoided the drama entirely. So I never yeah. had anything wrong with him to begin with. And I think at one point I tried to explain and it I to said, you, nope. and you wouldn't let me. Yeah, nope. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Fair <laughs> enough. I I almost wish I didn't know it myself. Yeah. But, it know. just makes it a whole lot easier. Yeah. But now, when I say I don't like Ben Affleck, it all comes back to the daredevil movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's where it started and that's kind of where it's been for years it, it's gotten so bad i haven't seen argo i haven't seen gone girl i haven't seen anything with ben affleck yeah. except for the new batman movie batman v superman and it was garbage yeah. And so that just reinforced it. And so now I feel really bad because Gone Girl and but, Argo, and there's been some really good ones people have said that have come out. Yeah. And I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. And so I, I bought Argo, and I bought Gone Girl now, yeah. and I haven't seen them yet. Because <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just look at it, I'm like, it's Ben Affleck. Yeah. I just, I, I need to watch it, but it has Ben Affleck, and there's right. just other things I could be doing. Yeah. So I have a plan someday. I'm going to see Argo. I'm going to see Gone Girl. And then maybe, just maybe, I'll like Ben Affleck in Justice League. Just maybe. There's that little well, sliver of a chance. Here's the deal. I, I agree with you. Batman v Superman was trash. But I don't think Ben Affleck was what was wrong with it. Nor even, I think he was one of the good things about it. Yeah. <laughs> I liked his character in it. I, I mean, but, yeah. he's... Okay, people... Some people don't like him. He's not super charismatic. I get that. He's more of like an unhinged psychopath. Right? Which is really cool <laughs> going off the Frank Miller Batman. And yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, no, it's... I, and Speaking I liked him as Batman. Uh, the Batman scenes, what few there were in the movie, were the best parts of the movie. Yeah, so, I even agree with that. And I don't like... Yeah. I don't, you don't like, like Ben Affleck. Yeah, right. So, I mean, that's so, saying something. 
So yeah, that's. Yeah. By the way, after I'm done reading the Frank Miller Batman Dark Knight Returns, yeah, do you want to read it? Sure, I could give awesome. it a shot. Yeah, I think you'd really like it. You'd find a lot of really cool similarities to like the games and the movies. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's some really cool stuff in there. Go mm-hmm. read it. It's one of the classics. Yeah, I've. Uh, We're not I... gonna have a favorite book section. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I want to close up um, movie segment. We and probably should. We'll uh, we'll dedicate the remainder of this second hour here to music. Yeah. Um, we can make it a little shorter because I don't have a whole lot to talk about this week. Then again, last time I said I didn't have as much music stuff to talk about as movie stuff. Our music segment ended up being longer than the movie <laughs> segment. But I'm going to keep it kind of short this week because at this point, it's going to be about two hours. You know, that's a good length for a podcast. I I think any longer than that would be a little. Yeah. So um, my last thing, this could be just real short because uh, there's nothing to talk about here. I just wanted to mention it. Um, Apparently, there is a title for the Han Solo standalone Star Wars film now, and it's called Solo uh, Star Wars Story. And I don't... Here's the thing. I don't like that title. It just That's doesn't dumb. sound right. It's just... I want to go see Solo. <laughs> That's really <laughs> the dumb. Star Wars story. It The naming structure is similar to Rogue One, yeah. obviously. But it's like... You could have just called it Han Solo, a Star Wars story. I, th- I, I thought that too. But then I thought... I don't know. Solo... Han Solo is a little too just like boring like solo, i mean so is solo solo puts a spin on it a so little bit it. of spin but then i realized like what else could you call it besides that because the only point for the movie is to be about han solo so like what do you call it like uh darth maul han bount- solo story bounty hunter <laughs> oh bounty hunter oh hold on there's a, a list there's a list we're uh talking about in the movie club chat and uh <clears throat> hold on i'm gonna pull it up uh i'm i'm not I mean, so what are you, what's your opinion on the new solo? Oh, here I'll show you. A, here's it, the, the font. Right. It just doesn't look right. No. Uh, and that's Ron Howard. He's directing it. All right. And um, what's your opinion on it right now? Just quick little. It's okay. I mean, it sounds dumb, but I I can't imagine there's like it's it, it's an easy title to f- name, you know? Because no, like oh, I mean, as the movie as a whole, because we've, we've as a movie as a whole, the, movie, I'm, the title's I'm excited about it because I like Ron Howard as a director. He's made some stinkers, uh, even recently, but he's a good director, and I feel like he'll put a lot of work into uh, Star Wars. So Hopefully. I'm looking forward to it. But the names we suggested on uh, Movie Club Chat were uh, Kessel Run, uh, Who Shot First, Greedo Did Nothing Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, don't goodness. get cocky gta cloud city frozen in parentheses in carbonite <laughs> uh and then oh my uh, gosh. What was it? zach did two more he's like han don't like you very much <laughs> and then <"Woo-hoo!" laughs> oh no and uh yeah so you ron howard you can name them any of those and we won't even charge you for it so is this gonna have yeah <laughs> Is this going to be like him meeting um, Chewbacca? I mean, probably. That'd I'm sure cool. that will probably have something to do with it. Because it's like a Han Solo origin story, essentially. Oh, God, I hope they go yeah. to Chewbacca's planet and actually do that <laughs> cool for once. Oh, no, they're I, not going to do I, that. I, After the Holiday listen, special, there's no listen, way. Listen, listen, listen. The reason why I want that is because if any of you have played uh, Star Wars The Force Unleashed, the first one where yeah, you're yeah. Darth Vader and you go to the planet of the Wookiees, yeah. it's one of the coolest places and like the most yeah. memorable scenes in that game, for me at least. Yeah. And I would just like, for once in my life, to see a cool version of that. On well, the it was screen. in uh, episode three. They went to Kashyyyk. There was a the droid attack on the Wookiees. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Could we get it good though? Yeah. That's fun. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I mean, Yoda and Wookiees. They were good. They were a cool little mix there for a second. But don't get me started on Ewoks. Don't. I hate Ewoks. That's right. You do yeah, hate Ewoks. I hate Ewoks. Why do you hate Ewoks so much? Because they're dumb. I don't want little weird teddy bears <laughs> in my Star Wars. <laughs> Dude, what if they would have made them like really cool and creepy looking? That would have been cool. I mean, I'd argue they're already pretty creepy. They kind of freaked me out as a kid. They're teddy bears. Yeah, I don't they're know. They're legit I was a, teddy I, I was bears. a weird kid, weird kid. You're but a weird li- kid. They're weird. Tell they're living teddy bears. Ted. Oh. <laughs> I'm giving up. So what's your favorite song of the week? Okay, song of the week. 
Uh, oh, now, all right, gracious. let's uh, shift gears. Talk Welcome to music. Get music in our minds. Welcome um, to the music, men. Welcome to music, everybody. My it's song like, of the week. Bump, but down. My song of the week is kind of sad in the same sense that last song of the week was a sort of a sad song, but I'm going a different direction in this. I'm going sad, angry rather than sad, depressed. And uh, it's a uh, real bitter, frustrated banger. And uh, take a listen. That was. Uh, I forgot we were doing that. Yeah. That was, <laughs> right. that was just a really awkward sec between me and Colin, and I, yeah. that I forgot we were going to let you listen to the song for a second. But yeah. back to it. For editing reasons, we had a little pause in there. Uh, that was <laughs> "Constant Headache" by Joyce Manor, and um, you really like Joyce Manor. I do don't like you? Joyce Manor. They're a kind of an emo hard rock group. Um, this song is very, uh, like I said, it's very bitter, very angry. You know, very like. Oh yeah, that doesn't translate. <laughs> I was just making, was making this really a, upset face and just headbanging. Yeah, sorry. Very bitter, very <laughs> angry, very like the singer sounds like he's just about to cry. Yeah, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, and it's just every time you hear it, you just gotta get into it. Like, oh yeah. So it's kind of like know? that one modest mouse song. Sort of. Where it's yeah. like, happy fucking congratulations. Yeah, sort of. It's just really, really gets you into it, you oh, know? I love, um, that. I love that song. Not a lot to say about it's it. It's not um, my song of the day, though. If you liked what you heard in the uh, song of the day clip, go check it out on Spotify or something. Good song. What do you think? I haven't heard it. I know. What, what's your song? <laughs> that was oh, wrong, bad wording. Bad my wording. Bad. I'm sorry. No, my That's bad. Fine. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, my song of the week. Yeah. Is a, a real a real rockin' tune. That's not the right word. It, the Mariner's Revenge song. It's seven minutes of just awesome. Yeah, check it out. And oh yeah, here, give it a give it a listen. How our history's in a wave. At the time you were a rake and a rascal about spending all your money. Is that long enough? No. Uh, well, hold on. Keep that. Do you have to wait the whole no, time? No, no, no. Oh, shh, shh, shh. Okay. Seven minutes? No. Is that... No, oh. seven minutes? Oh. Um, yes. Go. Okay. Well, actually, I think it's a oh. little more like eight. <laughs> I mean, it's How like, long is the song? Seven, it's like 7.40. No, it's like it's almost se- nine, isn't it? Or, no, 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 it's like seven and 40 some minutes. Okay, we'll wait that long. Not 40 minutes, but 40 seconds. Oh, my computer shut down. No, we're good. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so, Mother's so, Revenge Song. It's by just, uh, the, the Decemberists. Decemberists. Yes. And I love Oh, this I do, song. too. I do, too. <laughs> I, I don't think you understand. I put right, this no, on yeah. repeat. Yeah. Like, that's how much I love this song. And it's seven minutes long. And I just, like, as soon as it's over, I'm just like, bam, again. Bam, again. Bam. Oh. I listened to this song like in the double digits of over this past week. It's it's been a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And Is my the... phone playing this song? Oh no, it's playing a different song. My oh. bad. <laughs> I I couldn't hear it, so I doubt the mic could. It was just like a little rumbling. Yeah. Alt J. Um. Nice. Uh... <laughs> but no, it's it's this great mariner, you know, sea shanty of a song yeah. with this really weird girl in the back and it's yeah. just ooh, seven minutes of just this guy telling this like awesome story and i've just been yeah. listening to it over and over and over again trying to memorize all the lyrics yeah. and just sing to it and be like yeah because it's just so cool no it's a great song it really is 
Uh, I, I really love that kind of like mariner folk, you know? Yeah. It's really cool. Oh, after we were dead before the ship even sank by Miles Miles. Um, yeah. God that's a good sakes. mariner folk album. That's I've a said. lot of words in one sentence. Yeah. After that, you know, Colin was just begging to find some more sea yeah, shanty right. type music, and so he found this and he's like, Josh. You want to listen to it? <laughs> I said, yeah. yeah, sure, I'll give it a try. And then we just played it in my car as I was, like, dropping Thomas out or something. Yeah. And I'm just like, this is this is awesome. Yeah. Oh, I love it. And uh, we I were, really we were like, blasting it in the car when we came back from oh, Queens, the and... Queens of the Stein. Oh, Center my goodness. We, we, should also, we should also talk about that. Well, we just started music. We got to get into it. I suppose. You want to just go right into let's, that? Let's okay, finish so... off Mariner. Yeah. So... Go listen to it. It's about this cool little guy. He's like, bam, I was eaten by a whale. And yes. then he, his enemy, his moral enemy was eaten by a whale. And then he sings a song about it. Yeah. And he's like, mmm, whales. It's mm. good. Listen to it. Great song. Uh, and we just saw a great concert. We which did. Was Again, it's Queens. like we're rolling in the month. Yeah, for, for sure. We, this uh, is the last concert I'm ever going to see because I'm poor. Yeah, me too. Uh, we, we got the tickets for the Moss Mouse concert and this concert like months ahead. And now, oh, I, yeah, I, I, like yeah, a long yeah, time like ago. I, the next concert I'm probably going to see is in the spring, and that's Northern, Northern Invasion. Yeah. Probably. But um, it was Queens of the Stone Age, and their opener was Royal Blood. Both acts oh. were incredible. <laughs> Up at the Roy Wilkins, which... Yeah. I actually thought the sound quality in the Roy Wilkins was really bad, which I know you thought it wasn't I bad. I thought it was. I um, it was it wasn't as good as it could have been, but it's like you know why I have a little bit of sympathy for the uh, sound techs because you've done that. That is my yeah. job, you know. Like I, I for those who don't know, I'm a lighting and sound engineer at an auditorium, so I ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> and, um, uh, yeah. But yeah, like I. But no, it wasn't great. I'll I'll give you that. It wasn't um, great for Royal Blood. It was pretty good, but it's for kind Royal of, Blood. It was the only reason why I think it was so good for Royal Blood is because it's, if you don't know Royal Blood, it's two guys. Yeah. They there's like no way to mess that up. Yeah. Like, especially if you're professional. So you know? minimal. It's so. a guitar and drums. Or, and singing, yeah. And singing. And then there's if it's keyboard. not guitar, there's a keyboard and drums and singing. And then he just swaps off the guitar and the keyboard. Yeah. Um, what really amazed me is I thought they were going to, you know, Royal Blood's kind of been picking up in popularity. They have the second album now. It did really well. Yeah. Um, I honestly thought they were going to go like the way that um, the Black Keys went, where it was two guys. And then they started bringing in like no-name musicians to just help fill out the sound. Yeah. Not at all. Well, I mean, there's still time for it, but there's I don't still think time. I don't personally think they're going to. I hope they don't. If they do, I wouldn't be all that surprised because, like, to fill out your sound, I I understand. Yeah, that. But, but like they are they sound, so good they sound and great, so yeah. tight on just their own, just the two guys, yeah. drums and guitar. They drums, yeah, drums and bass. Yeah. But see, and it sounds like. You couldn't get a good sound sound out of drum and bass. Go but listen it's to it. You so can. So crazy good. Yeah. And what they sound like on the studio albums. They that's sound, just that's what they sound like yeah. live. It's so cool. It was awesome. Yeah. They're really good performers. They've got great stage presence. Yeah. They've it was got good it was audience really interaction. Good. Very British. Yeah, very British. Which me and Colin both enjoy. Oh so. yeah. <laughs> and um But it it's still in my mind, as great as they were, it was kind of overshadowed by queens of stone age that night because queens of stone age were excellent the only issue with it was that the sound was a little muddy but that's because queens of stone age they were a five piece and there's a lot going on and it could have the sound could have been better but it was an excellent concert i disagree i think royal blood was better well yeah okay <laughs> I have such an attachment. To I know Queens of the Stone you Age. and Queens of the Stone Age go together yeah. like butter and peanuts. Yeah, that... peanut butter and jelly. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> butter and peanuts. butter and peanuts. You oh, know what? the classic combo. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, oh, boy. All right. But now I've always liked Royal Blood a lot, and I've followed them since you know their first album came out. Yeah. And so I finally got to see them, and I was just blown away with how good they were. And the yeah. sound, even though the place wasn't that great, which we didn't know at the time. Like, when yeah. Royal Blood came on, they played, it sounded really good. I'm like, wow, yeah. this place doesn't have bad audio. Like, it's it's fine. And then they got done, and then the setup started happening, like a 30-minute setup for, for Queens. And then they came up on stage, and they had this awesome light show, actually. Yeah. Which was really cool. Um, but as soon as they started playing, like... 
it was just so much noise yeah. coming from all these guys. Five and guys. We, burgers and fries. Every time. <laughs> Every time, can't even. I talk was. To you I was even about to say something else, and I interrupted myself because I had to do it. <laughs> you and A both did that to me. Oh, oh the it, night was, it was. It was. It was like right at the same time. You're it like. Was, you're like. Oh, you're talking about uh, how they got that sound with five guys, and me and Abe just looked at each other I said, and we're like, "Burgers and fries." And I said, "Oh, oh boy." I stopped talking. We're so. we the rest of the night. We're so lame. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. And. Um, yeah, now, um, I don't think sound was awful for their show, but it was, like... Not awful. Not, it was not worse. great. Yeah, I've, I have definitely heard worse. And I've... Now, my relationship with Queens is, is a lot different than yours. Yeah. I own Songs for the Deaf. Yeah. Um, that's it. That's yeah. all I own. And it has my favorite song, um, you know, my favorite song. Uh, no one knows. No one knows. Yeah. No oh, one knows. Took a, took a second there. Uh, yeah. That's that's my favorite song by them. So it's it's a real simple but classic '90s classic. Is not, that a '90s or 90s. early 2000s? So 2002 that album. Okay. Came early 2000s classic. I think 2002. Don't quote me on that. All right. Um, I'm gonna Google just because. And then there's Threes and Sevens, which they also played. Yep. And that song they just rocked. That, that was, was by far my favorite song they played, except for the closing act, which was Songs for the Deaf. Songs for the Dead. Dead. That's yeah. what I meant. I'll give you that because Songs for the Deaf is the most confusingly named group of songs. <laughs> I have. Okay, I'm gonna look it up. But yeah, the the okay, I hope you can hear my my loud awesome. typing. Otherwise, but, like song wise, they did Smooth Sailing, which was cool. Oh, that's a great song. Um, yeah, no, they're. And um, I just the rest of it was just all right. You know, I knew over well over half of them just because I had heard them, yeah. but I didn't know the names of most of them. Yeah, the album Songs for the Deaf has Song for the Dead, uh, Song for the Deaf, the real Song for the Deaf. Oh my gosh. And then, <laughs> and then there's uh, another love song. Oh, um, that's a good one. A lot of song of songs, which is the title song and then the in the name. The Mosquito Song. Mos mosquito Song, right? The, I like that one. Yeah. They didn't play that one. Well, no, it's a... I wouldn't imagine they would. Me neither. Uh, but yeah, no, it's um, confusing. So the one that they ended with, Song for the Dead... Could I play a little... Just like yeah, physically play, here, play a little snippet? No, just play it over the, the big things. I don't feel like doing that. <laughs> I don't feel like putting that work in, so I'm just going to play a little right. snippet here. Get ready for some real audio. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. All right. Here, it's not. It uh, it's not playing. Oh okay. yeah, that's right. Because we're plugged yeah, in. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Scratch that. Forget everything. Because <laughs> the, just told the you. mic's plugged in. All right. Never mind. You know, our mic is a Blue Yeti, and it has its own like headphone feature. Yeah. So when you're using it, you can't play audio out of the device you're using it in. It's kind of weird, but anyway. Yeah, great concert. Quiz of the Stone Age. Great. Oh, he's got it. He's got it. How long can we play? Uh, once it's done with the cool drum fill, we can stop. All right. Yeah, that's song. That's the song they ended with. They ended the concert with that, and it kept going. It didn't they would stop. they would stop, and the audience would cheer, and then like they get counted back in. They keep oh going with this, and, and, and it just, lasted like eight minutes. <laughs> yeah, it just kept going, and then it's like. Finally, they're done. Clap, 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 clap. It's like, oh my god. See, oh my god. It was that was insane. And then we didn't really catch this. Um, yeah. But Abe, you know, the guy we keep promoting in his new band, Vinyl Amalgam, uh, yeah. he was down front with the other guy from Vinyl Amalgam, yeah. Robert. <laughs> Uh, and they they both were down on the floor, so they were up close and they could see him. Apparently, uh, Josh Homie. 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 Josh Homie. 
Hami. Yeah, jo- Joshua Hami. Yeah. Uh, the, the lead singer of, of Queens. <laughs> he got knocked over, right? Well, he was walking with a limp yeah. before, and Abe said. <laughs> yeah. Which I didn't... We didn't... Well, I didn't see it. I don't know if you saw yeah, it. Yeah, I didn't. Well, here we had an interesting perspective from the show, because it was me and Abe and Josh all went. Or me, Josh, and Abe, because Abe's not here right now. You get precedence. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it was me, Josh, and Abe. Um... You want to call Abe up and get him in here? Yeah, sure. Uh, Get him on the phone. (laughs) Do it. We'll have a guest appearance. Anyways, me, Josh, and Abe. um, We were all got had seats together, but they were like nosebleed seats in the very back because we're poor. And uh, at the very last moment, Abe, a friend of Abe's, offered him an extra floor ticket because she had a floor ticket for somebody who didn't show up. So he got to be right in the front on the floor, and me and Josh were right in the back. So we got both perspectives, and we're comparing notes at the end of the concert. So it was fun. Abe Anderson, uh, I can get you at the moment. Leave a message. <sighs> He's not picking up his phone. Hey, story. Abe, welcome to the podcast. You're here on our podcast. Oh, well, boy, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Uh, so Abe didn't answer his phone. Yeah, Abe didn't answer his phone. But Never mind, cool. we're not promoting Vinyl Amalgam. Uh, yeah, Vinyl Amalgam and Nice and Abe Anderson, all three of those. Um, yeah, we're promoting them. Yeah. Screw you, Abe. Definitely go listen to them. <laughs> uh, and not just because I am now also a part of Vinyl Amalgamation. Have I talked about that? I'm, um, I'm not an official member of Vinyl Amalgamation, but... I am a guest bassist, meaning that Robert is the official bassist, and every time they want him to rip it on a sax, play sax, they'll bring me in and I'll be the bassist. And uh, I just played a show with them recently, and it went great, honestly. Um, everybody was complimenting my bass playing, so apparently they like me, so. Good. It was really cool. Yep. That was a that was a house show with Vinyl Amalgamation, another band I don't know the name of, but Hippocampus. Some cool guys. No, we yeah, did not play a Hippocampus. They're that big. <laughs> yeah. By the way, look up Hippocampus. A lot of people don't know them. Yeah. Look up Buttercup. It's a good song for sure. It was almost my song of the week this week. Yeah, it's good. I'll yeah, that'll be my song of the week eventually. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> let's share our songs. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But yeah, and then the guitarist pushed over Josh Homie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so what we saw from up top is we didn't really see what no, happened. No, I didn't see him we, at, at one moment, he was on the ground. He was just lying And there. I assumed that... And it was, like, during a guitar solo. Yeah, I just so I assumed it was an he was, young kid. Yeah, I assumed like, he was just, like, yeah. laying back and doing... But apparently, he got, like, knocked over by yeah. one of the other guitarists. And, like, he didn't want to try to get up during the guitar solo. Or if he so, did, he couldn't because of the limping. Yeah, I, I assumed that he didn't want to mess up the guitar solo by trying to get up during it. So so he just kept going on the ground. Yeah, I don't know. So it's like that was, that was weird. I'm, I'm wondering if it was, you know, drugs, alcohol, or a previous injury. I don't know. I don't think it's drugs or alcohol, but it could have been. You never know. This yeah, is Josh Homme we're talking about. So you never know. I'm just making. It was fun. No. Blatant. Blatant. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, we're tired. <laughs> I don't know but what yeah, I'm talking that was a, about. That was a great concert. That was really fun. Um, yeah. Do you have any... Because uh, this was a thing I did last week. Is there any like good album that you've heard recently that you want to talk about? Good album? Yeah. Like, oh, the the new Nothing More album that I just right, came Right, yeah. That's like, a pretty good album. Your, what's your short review of that album? My short review. Not as good as the previous album, also known as their second album. Yeah. Um, About on par with their first album, which is... If you know nothing more, uh, their second album was one of my favorite albums of all time. Like, yeah, probably top three. Like, that, and that big of a deal. Nothing more is kind of like hard rock version on metal. You should yeah. know that before going into yeah, it. Yeah, very, but... very good in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, the vocalist is amazing. Their live show is even more amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah, go look them up if you haven't. Look up Jenny or... Yeah. You know, God Went North, one of those. It's just real good stuff. Um, um, but yeah. the new one ha- is a little bit more... So what's interesting is the the first one seemed a little underproduced, and it felt a little bit more 
garage bandy, which makes sense for a first album. Yeah. Um, but it was a good first album. It had some really good tracks on it. The second one felt uh, more produced, and it had more of that... Uh, I don't even know what to say about it. It's just like... It's really artsy. Yeah, it just has some really cool things in it. Yeah. And um, it's really like psychedelic, experimental sort yeah. of. Yeah. And I feel like the third one was way too produced. It feels a little bit more... There's a lot of like techno in, yeah, in what I've heard about from the new songs. Like it's techno like techno stuff in yeah. it. Yeah. And it, Which, that's not a necessarily bad thing, but... No, it's different though. Yeah. And after their second album which is one of my favorite albums of all time, it kind of is a step back from, right. from what I wanted, um, which is more of the second album. But I'm okay with it. I'm okay. not upset. I'm, I'm okay with it because bands have to change over time. Otherwise, they end up dying. Like They just lose right. popularity and they just go away. And I don't want that to happen to nothing more. Mm -hmm. So if you get a chance, go check out the, the new album. I believe it's on Spotify. Um, Go check out the second album that is on Spotify. It's really good. Yeah. I was speaking of Spotify, and I closed my Spotify. Okay. Go check out Colin Spotify. He's uploading a bunch of songs on um, this playlist. Yeah. Um. Here, I because I'm too lazy to link things, uh, Colin, Panda, Ruddy, three words, that's my Spotify account. And I have a good songs playlist, and all almost all the songs you'll hear us talk about on this show... Plus, a lot more are on there. So, if you yeah. want some good, easy listening that follows my tastes, so it's Strictly a little his taste. It's a little weird, uh, but uh, but I anyway, mean, yes, that's a uh, sure. There's a lot of music I get off of there that I enjoy, but yeah, there's a lot that I skip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because they're, they're not all my my you type should, of music. You should make your own good songs. I, can, I like, do plan can, on it, yeah. but my problem is, is I'm not paying for Spotify yet. Oh, okay, that would, yeah. When I do, I definitely will. I was just gonna say, I um, I just recently the the one thing that was missing from my good songs playlist before like people started following it the fact that people are following it now and it's you and Roberto yeah I saw that uh you two are following it now mm -hmm. uh that caused me to be like there it was initially intended for just me the mm -hmm. playlist and now I'm realizing that there's other people listening to it I there's like. I tried to add a bunch of songs that I knew were good that I'd just forgotten to add to it. And yeah. that meant that there was no Red Hot Chili Peppers on the playlist until recently. And I love Red Hot Chili Peppers. So what I did is I went through every album starting at Uplift MoFo. Nothing from Freaky Styly or their debut. Because I just don't know those albums well enough. Yeah. Um, nothing from those two Do you know albums. Freaky Styly well enough? Not all that oh, much, no. Oh, come on, man. You should have yurtled the turtle. Yeah, I... I but, um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we're the only ones who probably know that song. Your old, your old turtle, that's a classic. Or, but, but, but what I did is I went through every album of theirs yeah, starting the at... Up, yes. <laughs> I, I started at Uplift Mofo and I went through every album and I took the one, what I consider to be the best song off of each of those albums... And this would be a fun little segment. I want to go through those and see if you agree or disagree with me. All right, let's do uh, it. And just out of uh, just a disclaimer, there are two from Stadium Arcadium because Stadium Arcadium is a double album. I figured it, since it has like twice the amount of songs as most Red Hot Chili Peppers albums have, I gave it two choices: one from the first half and one from the second half. All right, so I there are just, two from Stadium Arcadia. I just pulled up um, all the albums by Red Hot Chili Peppers, and yep. we're not including the best ofs. Not um, including best ofs, no. So let's let's kick it off actually with um, most uplift recent Mo Uplift Mofo. We'll start with uplift. okay, okay. Uh, so what did you put down for that one? Fight like a brave. Fight like a brave. That's a good song. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think. I think I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. I I yeah. just that's such a cool jam. It I is. like listening to it every once in a while. Uh, let's go straight to Freaky Styly, which you don't say you know much about. Um, uh, I didn't have one from Freaky Styly. I know. Yeah. Which is a real bummer, because there's some really good songs in here, like Jungle Man. Yeah, I'm a jungle man. <laughs> and sex rap, Catholic schoolgirls rule. Those are fun. Uh, Thirty Dirty Birds. How yeah. did you not put 30 Dirty Birds on I there? don't know, man. Oh my god. Go listen to 30 Dirty Birds. Yeah. It's really funny. Um, I don't think this even has... Oh, there it is. Yertle the Turtle. That would be my pick. 
Okay. You don't know the turtle. Go listen to it. It's basically Dr. Seuss, but it's Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, it's a good one. Um, Mother's uh, Milk? Mother's Milk, I did Taste the Pain. That's my Taste favorite off that pain. album. Yeah. Now, I didn't listen to this one nearly as much as I've listened to all their other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would probably be really lame and I'd probably say Higher Ground. I almost went with Higher Ground, but since it's a cover and not an original, yeah. I figured... I mean, that's, it's a really good cover. It's, it, that's understandable. Yeah. I, I get where you're coming from. Yeah. Um. Otherwise, you know, Taste the Pain is a good song. Yeah. Um. Johnny Kicked, the hole, kicked a Hole in the Sky. That was good, that's too. That's a fun one. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I'd probably go Higher Ground. Okay. Fair enough. I, I don't disagree with you there. Um. Blood Sugar Sex Magic. I, how about from now on, since I have a, a ready list, how about you give me yours and then I'll give you mine? I kind of want to hear yours because I haven't I haven't run into this on yours yet. What did you put? Uh, if you have to ask, really? Yeah. Wow. I love that song. I almost if put Sir Psycho ask. Sexy. See, that's what I thought you would have put. But I don't know. Is Sir Psycho Sexy is great, but it's not so, as, as so, accessible. So, 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 <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this just happens when I talk about Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, yeah no, that, um, that's for sure. You know what? I, I honestly thought you would have put Sir Psycho Sexy if I wouldn't I have I nearly guess. did, but at the I, I had a last minute change of heart, and I was like, if you have to ask, that's a, that's a jam. That right is a, it's a really good song. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you'll never know. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a good one, I gotta say. Um, let's see, my favorite... Uh, if I go to this album and I just like click one and I have to click one, it would be, oh goodness, this is hard. You're looking at Blood Trigger Sex Magic. No, no, no. It would either be Funky Monks or Mellowship Slinky. No, Mellowship Slinky and B minor, definitely. Okay, yeah. B major, sorry. That's a good song. Mellowship yeah. Slinky and B major would definitely be my pick then. Yeah. Oh, unpopular opinion. Uh, I'm not super keen on funky monks i think it's got a really good hook but it's yeah. a little too repetitive for my liking understandable understandable yeah but you know the reason why i say funky monks is one of my favorites though um yeah it, it might not even be that great of a song to me anymore but the reason why i loved it so much is because it was called funky monks and it was obviously a funk song and i was able to show it to my dad who never thought red hot chili peppers was a funk band it's not and a I yeah, freaking proved him wrong, and but I was so happy. But that's not even really the funkiest song in the album. I, I would know. argue, if you have to ask, it's yeah. the funkiest song. Either on the that album. or "Power of Equality." Yeah, yeah, those are both very, very funky. Yeah. Now let's one hot minute. One hot minute. Um, come on, come and get it. You wanna, you wanna? What's your one? Mine for one hot minute. I really like my friends, and I really yes. like P. <laughs> I would do P as a joke pick, but not even a joke pick. Like I that's mean, just a fun song. I guess I um, don't. I just I couldn't bring myself to count it though. I guess I didn't like Aeroplane all that much. Interesting. Is that your favorite? Yeah, that's my pick. Yeah, Aeroplane. Um, I think I and this was a really tough one. I think like, I out of the album it would be in my top, but it, like just I think as favorites, I it would either be um, Aeroplane or Deep Kick. Okay. Um, because I love this album. This is one of my favorite Red Chili Peppers albums. Yeah, it's a fun, fun fact. Good album. Um, um, I really like My Friends. I'd probably go with that. Yeah. My friends are so deep. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're absolutely going to agree on Californication. Are we? Yes. Are you sure? Yeah. I know we are, because I've already seen it. Purple Stain. It's yeah. definitely Purple Stain. Uh, that's a really not... A, that's a lesser known track off of Californication, yeah. but most, man, it's most good. Most people <laughs> would probably talk about either Californication, Around the World, Parallel Universe, Scar Tissue, or Other Side. Yeah. No, throw those out the window. Listen to Purple Stain. Yeah. It's that easy. It's really simple, really good. Yeah. It just really hits you. It's, it's just good. a good song. Yeah. Listen to it. It's that easy. Uh, now, and then, by the way, we're probably going to differ on this one because... Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure we will. What do, what do you think for by the uh, way? My favorite is Dost. I, I love Dost. It's yeah. like this real chill. That's pretty good. I've been dosed by you. That's, uh, that's so good. I don't know if it's one of my favorites on the album, but it is good. I, I, if I, I now, agree with you. Let me guess. Yeah? Zephyr song. Nope. No. What is no. it? It's uh, this is the place. This is the okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a good album in total. So anything you picked, I'd like be okay as I've with. said before. Like by the way, is really I've always said it's my favorite Red Chili Peppers album, but I've done some soul searching and it's tied with Stadium Arcadium. All right. Um, 
Okay. And by the way is like that's their soft album. And it's real nice. Yes, it's nice and smooth, very good. And um you no, know, I'll move on to Stadium or Katie. Now, you get this one. I have, I know, I get two, but one, one l- from let the me first just, half, one from the second. Let half. me just go through and say the ones that are going to be in my choices. Yeah. So we got Danny California, which I love that song. It just, mm-hmm. it's a classic. Uh, you got Hump de Bump, which is just real good. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's so hard to just skip past all these other ones I want to talk about. Wet Sand is such a hit. like mm-hmm. that's... And I think since you already know, I'll say right now, Wet Sand yep. is my first pick. Yep. Yeah. And then it ends with Hay on the first disc, yes? Uh, don't know. I think so. Okay. Well. Um, but Wet Sand is really oh, good. Here, uh, I'll bring up a graphic that should help you. Oh, that's really hard. Yeah. I think if you look uh, at Stadium Arcadium on the computer, it splits them up between discs. Yeah. Hey, hey is the last one on the first album. First disc. That's what I thought. Yeah. I'd probably have to agree and say Wet Sand, but it would closely be followed by Danny California and Hump to Bump. Yeah. Those are... Uh, uh, Stadium Arcadium is me. A, such a great album. And especially... That's one Michigan. of the best rock albums, yeah. albums of all time. It really. is. It really is. Yeah. Now, I know we're going to disagree on this second one. Probably. Uh, what's yours? Uh, it's Turn It Again. Turn It Again? Really? Either Turn It Again or wow. Death of a Martian. I was really See, close between those two. I was, I'm really close with Death of a Martian as well, but it also loses to um, Hard to Concentrate. Hard to Concentrate. Which, okay, fair which enough. Which is just, I don't know why, but it just matches everything I wanted from a Red Hot Chili Pepper song at the time. Yeah. And it just fit. Okay. It's so good. Um, but Death of the Martian, it's such a close second. Yeah, I, th- I think since we... Uh, I think I'm going to call Death of a Martian the winner, even though I picked something different, because we I'd both agree so, on yeah. it. It's a good song. And it, it's nearly first place for both of us. Yeah. Now, I'm With You is, is a real fun album, and I'm pretty sure we both have differing opinions on this one, too. For sure. Uh, so what do you got? I got Brendan's Death Song. Oh, not yes. as different as I thought. That's my second pick, actually. Yeah. Um, third pick being Factory of Faith, which is just a good song. Um, oh, wait, no, wait. Look Around's really good, too. <laughs> <laughs> and Rain Dance Maggie's good, but it definitely yeah. isn't up there with the with the rest of mine. But my, my absolute favorite is Even You, Brutus. Yeah. Um, just because it's like really? this really cool slam poetry. Oh song. yeah, that's that's a that's a that's a nice song. Yeah, yeah, it's I'll it's that. one of my favorites. Yeah. I'm with you is such an underrated Red Hot Chili Peppers album. I think so too. Yeah, people just uh, they're like, oh, it's too poppy. I'm like, yeah, but they're changing with the times, man. Get yeah. cool. Get get getting jiggy with it. Nah, yep. nah, nah, nah. I think I know right. what you're gonna pick off of. Uh, the getaway of course and, and you might be surprised to know i disagree really you're gonna do goodbye angels of course the getaway did here's the do... deal oh no here's the what deal did you do goodbye angels absolutely a great song definitely the second best on the album maybe even objectively the best on the album what did you do i did uh dark necessities <laughs> because yeah. dark necessities is I've I've listened to it way more than Goodbye Angels because I just have such an attachment to it. It was like the first Mm -hmm. single that I heard off of The Getaway where I was like, this is great. This is Mm -hmm. like old Red Hot Chili Peppers. It Mm -hmm. sounds so good. And uh, it's an amazing song, I think. Dark Necessities is probably near the bottom for this. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Like right down there with this Ticonderoga, Mm -hmm. huh? (laughs) This Ticonderoga is number two. Kidding. Okay. Um, But this Ticonderoga is fun. I enjoy uh, that song. I don't know. It's something about the everything about it just bothers me. I don't like it. <laughs> um, but as far as like this album goes, like Goodbye Angels is definitely one of my favorites. And like We Turn Red. That's a great that one. That song's too. amazing. Yeah. The longest wave, mm-hmm. Sick Love. Like mm-hmm. those are just good songs. Go Robots Weird. Yeah. Uh Dreams of a Samurai. That's a cool song. Good closer. Yeah. yeah. But I just, of all of it, really, Dark I, I've listened to Dark Necessities way more than any of the songs on the album, mm. and uh, I just love it. No, all right. It's just me. All right. Um, I, I will say... That's, that's the big one right there. That's yeah. the big disagreeer that we got yeah, on Red Hot. So because uh, 
I will say, um, Goodbye Angels, great song. Mm -hmm. Good ending. Good, ev good everything. It's just a good song. Yeah, it's but Dark Necessities, man, I just, I just can't. I just can't. Really, even, Dark yeah. Necessities does it for you. Yeah, it really does. All right. Well, there you go. That's that's our spiel on Red Hot. I'm sure we'll be back to yeah, that adventure. I'm sure if some if one doesn't really care about Red Hot Chili Peppers, I'm sure that whole thing was very entertaining. And you probably shouldn't be listening to us because yeah. Red Hot Chili Peppers is awesome. Yeah, they're great. It's like one of the first bands I consider like my favorite band. They're so good. <clears throat> yeah, well, you know what? I think that's a pretty solid end point, unless you have something else to talk about. I'm satisfied. Uh, that uh, that list of uh, favorites I got, um, you can find that on my Good Songs playlist. Bear in mind, just to give the Good Songs playlist a little bit of a kind of neat... Uh, photo for the collection of albums like it it makes a collage of the first four albums of the playlist and i made mine like i tried to make mine look cool as possible with like the four bands that best represented me and one of them is off of stadium arcadium and it's red hot chili peppers mm -hmm. so bear in mind that the that the order that that everything was added in in the playlist is so messed up when you like if you're trying to go through the playlist sequentially um sort by band and even then don't go through it sequentially go through it go through it shuffled that's how it was meant to be listened to yeah it's worked so much better that way yeah so uh that yeah. way you don't get like 14 miles miles in a row right yeah <laughs> which hey i ain't complaining yeah but when i go to the good songs place i just want a, you want nice a variety, variety. Yeah. yeah so i guess that's it this episode was two hours I don't know if this is going to become the norm. Let's just say our podcast length will vary, vary. between an hour and two hours. Yeah. I nothing like more than two hours, nothing under oh, an goodness, hour. Let's hope not. Yeah. I mean, we might do, like, if one day we get really ambitious, we might do two episodes in a day. Yeah. Where we're just like, yeah, let's do, like, two so, hour and a half episodes. So, awesome. yeah. So, if you, in, uh, if you... If you like it, if you want it longer, let us know. We'll yeah. try to make more content to you in sure, the future. Yeah. Uh, and, uh... <clears throat> I guess that's it. I gotta get to give editing us comments. this. Yeah. Give us suggestions to talk what to talk about because yeah, I sure. absolutely love looking up new stuff and trying to figure out what you guys are into. Yeah. Um, I just have a good time looking at yeah. new stuff. Uh, hello, just a quick hello to um, Zach. Yo, Wheels. Uh, Roberto. Roberto, I don't know you. Uh, Dave. Yeah. And uh, everybody else who watches this show, um, we got a new guy. Um, I forget his YouTube name. And I don't even know if it's a guy. I'm sorry. Person. Alaheron, Ala however you pronounce your uh, SciTube uh, username, Reddit username. I'm sorry if you're not a... <laughs> if you're not a guy, but I'm, I'm just assuming because I'm sexist. <laughs> wow, that's a good one to end on. <laughs> but yeah, Bye. No. welcome to you too. I know you're listening to this. Welcome too, everybody, so. one and all. Like I'm yep. just glad we're getting. Welcome to everybody to who's listening to this. It's a slow start, but I appreciate. We do yeah, appreciate this is really and anybody cool. who's taken the time to listen to this. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, we should def we should set up an email. Sure. Send yeah. me a Snapchat. <laughs> yeah, send yeah. Colin a Snapchat. Yeah, he's up in the house. <laughs> Yeah. We're going to be making an email for next week because okay. I am legit wanting to do that. All right. So you guys can send us emails sure. for suggestions, things to look up. All right. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see you that. then. See you around. Bye. Goodbye.